Some of the dumpster invoices, we actually need to get a copy of the invoice for before we sign off on them. Are you circling those? Huh? Are you paying attention to which of these has the package for invoice? Like payroll. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that wasn't my question. I am not. I I told Rosemary the two that we needed, and she said she was going to follow up on them. <clears throat> okay. And Rosemary, in terms of like accounting for the orders, mm -hmm. you have a you have a way to mark the flood related items. So we'll be able to report on them. Yeah, I mean, a whole new fund for funds and stuff. Perfect. So if we, I feel like at least the first meeting of each month, if we can get a flood spend report, that would be helpful. And so far, I've got state park uh, debris removal and temporary office. And the portal ads. Okay, one of these three. Well, I think that they're definitely flood related. I don't know that we'll get reimbursed for them necessarily, but I think we should put them in the flood category because we wouldn't have them otherwise. Okay. Anything else that we spent money on flood related that Rosemary didn't just rattle off? I just have a question. Um, it looks like we have um, a significant bill for tire recycling flood related. Mm -hmm. Water damaged people's tires. It washed tires up all over town. Okay. That were not those people's to begin with. Still, so it is flood related debris. Yep. Yeah. Well, so, that's all I wanted to know. Yeah. And some people got <coughs> more inundated with tires than others. Um, inundated. <coughs> hmm. uh, I got a question on the pipe bill, which Rosemary may not know the answer to. Jason will always hear about it. On the what bill? Pike. Like paving oh, okay. bill for yep. 206000 okay. uh -huh. Do you happen to know, is that... Does Jason know where we are? Is that... Oh. It doesn't... I actually looked at the bill and it doesn't indicate where the paving was. Alright, so the streets. Oh, yeah. It did? Mm -hmm. So, Jason had called me earlier today and asked if there was items specifically for him. I didn't see any and usually his meeting with us is the third Monday of the month. So I just said we're kind of back to normal with there. If he wanted to come, I can get a hold of him, but I don't believe he's planning on attending. And he did ask. Yeah, no, I, that's fine. I think I think the bill is probably fine. <clears throat> and I, I looked at it and I didn't see what what route it was. Yeah, and you, it was listed, I don't know, Pearl Street, Street. Clay Hill. Clay Hill. Okay. That's the statement and the bill there. Yeah, I saw the bill. I guess I didn't see the statement, which must be where it where it said. But that that would be consistent with what my expectations were for the size of the bill. Okay. Any other items related to orders or invoices? Okay, review and approve minutes for meetings on July 3rd, 10th, 13th, 17th, 21st, and 31st. And also minutes of the joint select and trustee meeting on July 17th. Beth, we didn't do um, adjustments for... Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Right, it's true. Are there any adjustments or uh, modifications to... Sorry, additions or modifications to the agenda? I have a few things I'd like to talk about and I don't know if they fit logically into other items but we'll let me tell you what they are. Yes please. Okay. Um, one would be whether or not we're thinking about or have any kind of a plan for repairs to the office, both short and long term. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to give a brief update on our candidate situation. I don't know that that needs to be in an executive session. Okay. But it, it can be if you think. And then the other thing I I would actually like for it to be. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. All right, and we've already got an executive session on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to have, and maybe this is logical when Howard comes in, a uh, discussion about the current status of the floodplain regulation. Maybe that fits in neatly with Howard when he's here. Uh, the other thing 
Uh, it, does anybody have any kind of an update on the status of sterling market and whether or not we're going to be uh, involved in those discussions? I'm getting, I'm getting people asking me about that. Yeah, I get asked every time I go somewhere too. Um, okay. And also, by the way, Paul Warden, I've been talking with Paul, and he's not able to join the he was planning on it, but um, he is interested to know if and when there are any discussions on market, on the market, and how the planning commission can help. I think planning commission, we need to have involved in a whole bunch of things. So, um, additional items that I also have is... Um, determine how and when we have flood rebuild mitigation discussions in addition to normal business. Like, I just think we need to think about strategically about how often we are talking and with whom and be deliberate. Um, Could you sh say more about that, Beth? Uh-huh. Um, do we need to have meetings that are dedicated to flood recovery? Do we need to? Just hold. Sorry, I just added you. I can see it. Oh, that's good. All good. As soon as you turn my speaker off. Um, do we need to have more meetings? Do we need to just have a committee who is focused on all things recovery? There's just going to be a lot. There is a lot, and there's going to continue to be a lot. And I think we just need to think through what it really means and what, how we need to organize around it. Um, okay. Um, and then the other thing that we need to talk about, and I don't, it doesn't matter when, we can do it later in the meeting, but we need to talk about um, space just as a general topic and how we are co accommodating ourselves longer term and our community longer term. Um, <coughs> do, do you envision us having an update from Ron every, every select board meeting or every other, once a month? Or? I think we need to figure it out. And yeah. we're gonna need Ron's help us figuring it out. Yeah, uh, that would be good. Okay. Uh, any other? Yep, go ahead, Carl. Two more. There's a, a planned purchase. I uh, got information from Jason Whitehill today. And uh, item number 17, you do not need to approve the engineering service agreement for the covered bridge scoping study, but you could still talk about designating some steering committee or or designated representatives to help answer questions in between select board meetings. Yeah, and we also need to, thank you for that, Carl, we also need to um, uh, potentially, well, I think not potentially, I think we need to accept Howard's resignation. If it falls into our, our I'm confused by the whole um, flood appointment the flood, what is his title? What is his role? Flood Flooding Administrative, administrative Officer. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't understand how he was ever appointed to that to that role. I don't call it a position, but that role. So, because it's not in our annual appointments. It's not even listed in our town report at all. Um, it isn't, it probably should be as, in, and we should probably <laughs> henceforth and forevermore have a clear indication in our town report that we do have flood zoning regulations. That appointment was made, I don't know how many years ago, a long, long time ago. And it's not one that actually needs to be renewed once once the appointment is made, unless he resigns, he's it. I think we do need to remove it. <laughs> For when we get a major flood, the person who is appointed, everybody around that person has expectations around what the responsibility entails because I didn't even know it existed. Well, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be in the report as, as the, I'm just saying that it's, it's not an annual reappointment. Yeah, I think we should think about terms if we can. If it's part of the ordinance and we can't, it's fine. But anyway, okay, I hear you, gotcha. Okay, any other adjustments? 
That's plenty. Maybe we'll sleep tonight. Um, <laughs> tonight or are you thinking early tomorrow morning? Well, you never know. Time will tell. Review and approve minutes from the meetings that I listed off previously. Are there any discussion items on any of those? And again, the dates are July 3rd, 10th, 13th, 17th, 21, 31, and the joint meeting on July 17th. The only thing I'll say is I don't believe I was, it was the 21st that I was not there, so I would ask that we take them separately so I can abstain from that one, but. Sure. Um, so just by, I think there's a common misperception that you have to be here at a meeting in order to approve the minutes, you don't. Okay. So you. It's up to you. You can certainly abstain if you want to because you weren't here, but, but you don't actually have to be present at a meeting to vote in favor of the minutes. Not that it really matters. The meeting from the 21st has me listed as remote. I wasn't, but okay. has me listed as there anyways, so <clears throat> it doesn't really matter to me. I'll move to approve the meeting minutes for July 2nd, 10th, 13th, 17th, 21st and 31st. Okay. No. Just trying to make it quick. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Um, select board issues, concerns? Uh, I think this fits best. With all the rain and forecast, it doesn't look like Donaldson's going to flood again. So it's an investigation on a potential issue. And as good as our National Weather Service is, we look good. Okay. Any other issues or concerns? Um, the one thing I'll just say, because I think this is probably the appropriate place to put it, is there's lots of frustration in the community right now because there are tons, there, we all know, I'm just stating the obvious, but there's a lot of confusion out in the world. And there were probably unrealistic expectations. I know I certainly had some expectations expectations that aren't being met. Um, so I think we're going to continue to hear community members who are frustrated, angry, tired, all of those things. Confused. And as we encounter those people, I just ask that we be compassionate, regardless of how they're behaving toward us, that we're compassionate in response. Because um, it's going to be hard and it's not going to be easier. Okay. The items um, that I raised, did they get put on the agenda as action items, or should I raise them here? Uh, the ones you, before, I've added them as, a, as agenda items, okay. just throughout. Um, any other items? Okay, treasurer's report. Rosemary, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm going to go for third class for Marcella's Tesla restaurant and bar. When she originally did her, she did the third class for only to do it six months at a time, because it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So she's doing the next six months. Okay. Motion to approve liquor license for Marcella Salsa. <coughs> Sending the standard letter with it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I ask a question? Oh. Sure. Did they, did they have a I know when the peace place was there, they had a, a sort of an outside. Okay. So the, the license as written would be just consumption itself. Okay. Aye. Right. <laughs> Anyone else in it's favor? Aye. <laughs> Are you in favor? Aye. Me. Mark? Aye. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, okay. Anything else? What else do you got, Rosemary? Um, the state was very generous, so they paid us our pilot money ahead of time. Oh, good. Which we did good. in October, and they paid all of us, and they've also paid us the second installment of the state highway money. Is this the only one in this package? Yeah. This is part of money, what we had expected. I was going to say, did it come in more? <laughs> that would have been generous. A little bit more, but not much. Pretty, pretty close. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Cool. And we have received um, money from the community foundation of seventy five hundred dollars. And Jason took some metal to the mothers and got about fourteen hundred dollars for that. Cool. 
Good. I'll offset for debris. And uh, is Terry on the Zoom? She is, yeah. The errors of emissions for the North Carolina Mental Health Services. Sorry, what about them? They've had a change in the assessment from 320,000 to 234,000, a difference of 85,000. And Terry can explain the qualified housing change. Um, Terry, can you hear us? Yes, I can. So the only problem that I'm going to have here is that there's oh, she an can't. audio output here. So can you say muted, but have sound coming through there and it'll work? That is what caused problems a minute ago, but we'll try it. Hi, Terry. Oh, you, you don't have to have your um, mic on. My mic's not on. Your mic's not on? Okay. Hi, Terry. Sorry, we're going to have a little echoing. All right, my my dog barks every time I do a Zoom meeting, but she just stopped, so that's good. Okay, okay. did you hear Rosemary? Yeah. So the the chain the uh, the errors in emission was for one of the qualified housing. Um, when I went through the qualified housing, I the notes that Nimric left were not clear, and I thought that they had put more than ten percent on so i had fixed them all and then uh talking with don davis with the other qualified housing understood how it worked but the notes that nimrick left in camera were very unclear and um so i fixed uh those and then this was the other one that was not that i had changed but i need to fix back i see okay does anyone have questions for terry so she's got two notes on this <clears throat> thing that cam system at the 70% reduction rather than having come to the village and changing the value back to the qualified housing amount provided from the 2020 reappraisal. So that, that appears to be why it's going from 320 to 234. The 2020 reappraisal is, well, I guess we can't, we can't go back. Forget that. I understand. Okay. okay. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, errors and omissions lists uh, dated July 7th. Does somebody have a signature copy? Yes. Okay, we have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, thank you, Terry. Sorry for the echoing. Did you have anything else while we're chatting? Thank you. Okay, bye. So um, Jason asked uh, for, um, and Evan, you have that, right, that email? Yeah. yeah it's uh, roughly $2,900 that he wants for hydro seeding supplies that he would use throughout the year, so it's not just supplies for one road project. Um, it included the fertilizer and the seed and the what they label as mulch. And I'm sorry, I forgot now what the vendor was, but the email should show that because it had that quote. Items at Johnson Hardware and Rental. Another quote was wrong. And Jason did say uh, some, not all of this is reimbursable through a grant. 
through the um, the grants and aid the stormwater yeah. grants. Yeah. Oh, if it's being used, if he has a, a grant specific to a road, then some of it. I think there is, yeah. Okay. The total amount requested is 2,984 dollars and four cents. And that's basically buying what what needs to be bought in a bulk format. Yes. Um, <coughs> so there's. Uh, 63 units of auto lime, which is fertile or pelletized CAL, whatever that is. 50 units of PEM mulch and 40 units of 1919-19 fertilizer. So maybe the pelletized cow is grass seed. Move to approve. Can we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nice it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> flood related cadence and organization. Um, so uh, this is the new agenda item that I added. I think that we talked about this a minute ago, but I think that we need to figure out intentionally how frequently we should be getting together as a board. I think we should be figuring out how we should be getting together with committees. Let me just write these things down so I don't forget something. Um, also, planning commission. And I think of planning commission separately from committees because planning commission should be involved in um, flood mitigation, things like community, I, I believe, things like community development, planning, um, and other rebuild activities that are community-based. Um, and then we have, you know, just the work of the board separately from meetings, but I think that there is some work of the board working with Ron, with Ron's support. Um, I don't know if there are other categories. I do think also actually we need to have some sort of a plan for helping support communication for the individual um, aspect. And while we don't have much um, leverage and we don't have a whole lot of resources for individuals, I do think we can still be a conduit of information and I think we should be actually, not just that we can, but that we should. Um, and figuring out what that means and what that looks like I would really like to make sure we're doing that too. Um, and I think that goes to both businesses and when I say individuals, I actually mean businesses and individuals, um, basically non-public entities. Um, and all four of those categories, so boards, working with committees, working with planning commission, and LCPCs and all of the, uh, all of the like with planning commission, and communications with for public communications, um, I think they're all a lot, frankly. They're kind of overwhelming to think about what it'll mean long term. Um, but I think if we don't think about what it means long term, that any one of these things is going to be neglected in some way if we're not intentional. And I want to make sure we're intentional. So that being said, uh, I know I'm not really giving you much time to think about what this could mean. So I'm aware of that. I more than I don't want to necessarily commit to specific things tonight, but I did want to get everybody thinking about what it could look like. Um, Carl or Ron, do you guys have anything you'd like to add to this specifically? Well, there certainly is a lot you could talk about. Um, I don't know how many decisions you can make right away. Um, so you could, I guess, plan to have meetings even on a weekly basis and cancel a meeting if, like on the Friday before, you decide you, you really don't have enough to warrant having a meeting. Um, one of the things that Duncan mentioned, we really haven't been talking about very much 
That's the municipal building. Um, and as far as your point about assistance to individuals, um, I think we might spend a little bit of time just putting together a, a um, chart, for the lack of a better word, for what people should do. Like, first thing is they're supposed to register either with through 211 or with FEMA. And then somebody supposed to, from FEMA is supposed to come visit them. They have to make out application. The advice we heard today was that if they get a denial letter, they should read it carefully and then contact FEMA and ask why and appeal. Because it might just be because there was some piece of documentation not missing. And apparently the FEMA denial letters aren't real specific in that regard. It says, oh, we need you to have this estimate signed by the contractor. And then maybe somebody would understand it. That's all they have to do. But so, so we could put together something like, like that. And SBA is here tonight. They can talk about um, what's available to help businesses. And there are also their role for individuals, because there's assistance to individuals coming through SBA. So if that's something you want us to work on, we could make that priority and get something done and deliver it out to everybody again. Okay. Yep. Okay. Ron, your thoughts? Uh, remember in the uh, Halloween store, we set up a every Friday at 11 a.m. call or you know location if you wanted to. But. So anybody with concerns that kind of came up during the course of a week would be able to sort of center themselves, I guess is a good word, on a, fri on a Friday at 11 to have resource people there that could answer questions or collect notes and chase it down and get back to the person, those kind of things. It was helpful for staff as well because there was, um, you know, just having that kind of communication outlet for staff during COVID, during the flood, you know, whatever the event is, if you have that hope, like Carl just said, eventually it was every other week, eventually it was monthly that we stopped, you know. Right. So having that outlet, it's, it's, you know, centers things or it's, it's, you know, purposeful. So resources, SBA, SEOC, you know, there's lots of resources. The problem with the frustration, I think you might be, people just don't want to read a pamphlet sometimes. They just want to talk to somebody. So if they, if you have a designated person within the town system that can feel that and keep current, you know, SBA is going to say some things tonight that we haven't heard before kind of stuff. Uh, who's going to be able to spit that back to a Tuesday morning phone call from somebody that's just getting up, you know, their right. head wrapped around their knees? Right. So, I, 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 and that's a plan. That's a planning meeting. I mean, it's part of your response plan. It's not quite like a debris management plan. It's not quite like a flood response plan. It's almost like a mini component of just communication. Yeah. And how how you deal with that. So if you don't have a designated person that can sort of keep current, FEMA's not going to be able to help you on the day to day. SBA will have pamphlets, but you know, at some point town has to kind of fill that gap, which should reduce the frustration from the people. Yeah. And just like we say, call 211, they're not going to call five select board members haphazardly finding out who has an answer. You know, it really shouldn't be like that. Agreed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did it work, Ron? To, I like the idea of having a call-in hour versus... It was an hour. It wasn't a long, it wasn't a day. It was specific to... You're right. One hour and then uh, Friday at 11 or something. Yeah, it was just a great point before the weekend started yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Versus having to have staff hold a meeting, which people may or may not come to, but uh, if we were to reach out and put it out front porch for them and let people know that there'd be a time they could call. Are you frustrated as the header? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I wonder if there I'm, I'm calling. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder I if there might be. That could be too open ended. <laughs> <laughs> We're all frustrated. I wonder if there might be a possibility of working with other towns to hire someone who is a little more experienced in this type of thing to be a case manager for, like you were saying, to follow up and, and bring people to the next step when, when they need that help. Because, yeah, I think a big thing is 
we're asking people who are in the middle of you know rearranging their lives to document it all and get on the phone for three hours and you know it's uh it's a lot so i i, I said kind of throughout that having someone that we bring in to help with that would be a big help yeah i don't know if we need to hire someone but i was just thinking i was thinking this i wrote cambridge down because like i wonder if we could just partner partner with cambridge and rotate every other week you know either way you might have somebody you know yeah. neighbor group of some sort. I don't, you know, I don't know exactly who's in Johnson, but yeah. Okay, that's good stuff. Um, okay, good. I wanted to put that out here because I think we need to have this conversation for real next time. We'll go away, think, document. If people have ideas, send them my way. I'll start putting something together on on what this could mean. Um, and by the way, when I said board as one of the categories, I meant board and town business when I said board, because I meant all, I meant part of that is actually the municipal building um, uh, and the library and all of the, the other building structures that have some role in the library, maybe committee related. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but I do just want to make sure that we have a plan for addressing these things and get people thinking about where they think they can be most effective. I'd like to suggest something that Carl alluded to, and I know nobody wants <clears throat> any more meetings than we need to have, but I think the reality is we're probably going to be facing weekly meetings for a while. <clears throat> My suggestion would be to reserve the, our two regular board meetings for town business only and have the other meetings be flood related issues only to the extent that we possibly can do that. I know that there may crop up some things that need immediate attention, but um, I, think, I think it's really good to devote a meeting to business, a uh, meeting I agree. to flood related. I just don't know how realistic it is to not talk about flood stuff in a regular meeting, but I agree with you in yeah. theory. Well, I think what if I can if we have a dedicated flood meeting and then there's some uh, bad pun spillover into the normal meeting, I think that's that's fine, right, Duncan? Is that kind of what you're getting at? I I fully understand and appreciate the fact that best laid plans of mice and men <laughs> may not work out, um, and there may be some spillover, um, and we just will have to deal with it. But to the extent that we possibly can, I think we'll focus on town business stuff and flood related stuff at those meetings is an admirable goal. <clears throat> um, is everybody going to shop if we do make weekly meetings? <laughs> That's the real question. I think that's what we all signed up for, right? At the pay, oh, yeah. at the pay increase we got this year, I don't know how we can deny it. How about like just every okay. meeting except for the second Monday of the month? Let's be realistic here. The second Monday of the month, if we need to talk financial stuff, Rosemary is going to be with the trustees. If it's flood-related financial stuff, oh, am right. I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Okay. Well, you could just come to our meeting instead. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's, Somebody's it's watching point. that's going to take that seriously. It's a good point, Evan. Um, okay. So three meetings a month instead of four. I mean, we can just whittle that down to an even one. Okay, the thing is, like, <laughs> again, I want to just be intentional. So let's put this out there. And I do want to put a bunch of thoughts on a piece of paper because I can't do select board stuff every day of the week anymore, which I pretty much do at this point. I can't do that every day. So I want to be intentional because I want to make sure that if we're going to have a week that's an off week, that the different categories are all being addressed appropriately, if you know what I mean. Like, in other words, I don't want to get to a point where um, planning commission coordination doesn't happen because we're so focused on getting a municipal building up and running, supporting a committee and or two committees or three committees and something, and getting communications out, because that will not serve us well in the long run. Um, so how do we make sure we have a plan for addressing these things? 
like I said, I'm going to draft it. We'll we'll keep this discussion going, and it sounds like we're going to meet next week anyway. If, if <laughs> so. we're worried, well, next next week is the second Tuesday of the month, so that would be second my Monday. second Monday. So that'd be my exact scenario. We can meet next week, and if you're worried about like communication with committees, why can't their chairs or the whole committee just come to those flood related meetings? I was going to say as one of my suggestions that we have as part of those those flood meetings we have chairs if possible but representation from various committees that are important to moving forward yeah um, the ones I just kind of wrote down are planning conservation library historical um, I'm sure there's a lot more skate park beautification yeah okay. really all right at this you know um, to varying degrees. Yeah. I mean, the reality is it's at varying degrees, but. Yeah, I just also want to throw out that <clears throat> I understand and appreciate your comment, but the sad reality is we are operating without a full-time town administrator. It's true. Who a lot of this stuff would fall on. Yep. Um, and we're in the process of hopefully hiring somebody on the community economic development piece who might be able to take over pieces of this. So I guess. When you talk about expectations, yep. we need to be realistic about what we can accomplish as well, given staffing issues, concerns, and general burnout. <clears throat> right. Full new board next year. <laughs> <laughs> we can run hard for the summer, oh, guys. Stop it. Okay. Okay. Next up. <clears throat> um, I got it. I'm going to do that one after. Let's do the SBA presentation, and we'll pick this up again, I promise. Okay. SBA. Yes. Hi. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Jim Accurso. I'm a public affairs specialist with the Small Business Administration. Been here in Vermont for a couple of weeks. Uh, traveled the country, met Carl uh, uh, about 10 days ago. And because uh, Memorial County is one of my primary counties that I focus on. Uh, and I am here to inform uh, residents of Johnson and of the county that we, are, we offer uh, physical damage loans to homeowners and renters. We also offer uh, physical damage loans to businesses and nonprofits, and then economic injury loans to businesses. The deadline to apply for the physical damage loans is pretty much around the corner. It's September 12th. Um, and we encourage anyone who has had any kind of damage or feel that they may have, may be eligible for our loans to come into one of our centers or applying online. Uh, we're going to be opening the center right here at the school, uh, or, or FEMA is going to be opening their a disaster recovery center here on Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow they have a soft opening, and it's going to be uh, in McClellan Hall, one thing right here. Uh, and John and Johnson. So I'm hoping it's tomorrow the hard opening is the ninth. All of our centers are open seven days a week uh, from uh, nine to five, and uh, if for the time being. And again, we encourage folks to come in and talk to us uh, to see if they can qualify for the loans. Uh, applying for an SBA loan is very much like applying for a loan to the bank. However, there are no fees and there's no obligation to take the loan if it's awarded to you. Uh, if the loan is in fact awarded, your first payment is deferred interest free for 12 months. So we really want to help folks get back up on their feet. Um, the loan limits for the physical damage for the homeowner uh, is $200,000. Uh, for contents, personal property contents is $40,000. And that's also, also for renters as well as the homeowner. Um, the, uh, physical damage uh, <clears throat> for the businesses uh, is two million. Uh, the limit is two million, and then the economic injury is two million dollars. We've got that all spelled out on uh, fact sheets that I have. I can leave information for everybody. Uh, the loan application process and what's required. Again, very sim uh, very similar to when you uh, apply for a bank loan. You're going to have to have your your uh, your EIN number. You're going to have to have a current tax or a completed tax statement, most recent uh, tax records, um, profit and loss. Uh, we will go do a site visit, much like FEMA does, you know, to verify the loss. Um, 
The application will go in at the centers where we encourage folks to come in, again, and talk to a customer service rep. Uh, much as we <coughs> do it online, it will then get assigned to a liaison, and within a few weeks, you'll get assigned to a loan officer. The loan officer will then talk to you about the terms of the loan. Again, they can be up to 30 years to pay, to pay back, and, and you know, and then the, you know, the maximum amount, whatever, uh, is determined that, that uh, um, the loan amount is going to be for you. Um, and then once the signed documents are issued to you, uh, within five days, you can get your first payout of about $25,000. So we work in accord with FEMA, whereas FEMA comes in and provides grants, we provide loans. Uh, unlike FEMA, we do, um, where FEMA only helps homeowners, we help homeowners, renters, nonprofits, and businesses. Um, we also offer mitigation coverage. If uh, a homeowner or a business puts in place measures to keep a similar disaster from reoccurring, you can get an additional amount up to 20% of the, of the, of the uh, damages in, on top of that loan. Uh, we do help with refinancing, we, and everything is all spelled out again here on, the, on this fact sheet that I have here. Um, the interest rates are, for, for the home loans are 2.5%, business loans are 4%, and nonprofits are 2.3%. Uh, and those are regardless of your income level? Yes, regardless of income level, again, because we, we, we want to we want to help everybody, uh, but it's not regardless if you're able to get credit available elsewhere. So if you uh, if it's a business that's able to um, get credit available elsewhere, those those interest rates fluctuate. But again, uh, we encourage when you know when the loan is going to be awarded. Again, you have no obligation to take it. You work with your uh, you work with your loan officer in that regard. Does that include landlords? Uh, yes, we're, yeah, so a landlord would be deemed a business. So that's, that's where you get in that kind of a gray area with FEMA, because FEMA won't help a landlord because it's a business, but where we you know we can. Like I said, we are opening a new center. So we have a center, you know, there's one right now in Morrisville, and then we're going to be opening one here at the school. I just learned of that today. So we're going to be opening one here at the school. Soft opening and hard opening uh, uh, Friday. So, whereas a, a disaster recovery center, there's FEMA, there's us, and there's other organizations that can actually can actually help folks. Uh, in addition, not actually help, but in addition to the help we can offer, can uh, uh, Red Cross comes there, volunteers come there. Um, we work. I've seen with Samaritan's Purse and, and uh, you know other volunteer organizations that can provide clothes and food and the like. So it's, things are just starting to get ramped up. You know, this is week three. Um, likely in a situation like this, you know, the, term, the, uh, the length of the uh, application process is dictated by the fact that it's a presidentially declared disaster, which this is. So there's a two-month window to apply. And then after that, if uh, we're needed to stay here, you know, we, we, we do stay at the request of the state to help out. Um, we also, too, work with a number of different partners, the Small Business Development Centers. We work with the uh, SBA here in, in, uh, um, in Vermont. Uh, we work with the uh, USDA, so a lot of other partner organizations. If anybody has any concerns or, or uh, difficulty in filling out their applications, they could work with the Small Business Development Center. They could work with the school, they could work with the Veterans Business Centers and the Women's Business Centers that are out there. So they're all, we're all kind of like a partnering network. And once we leave, when we do ultimately leave, you know, we're here to offer any uh, different assistance for the, with those other groups if someone you know, has some issues with their own. So does credit score determine interest rate, or is, like, is there a possibility of being denied due to credit? Could be. So we look at credit history, but, the, but again, what we really look at, it's a very good question, what we really look at is the ability to repay. So if they can demonstrate the ability to repay, um, we, we will work with them. Again, your loan officer will work with, work with the individual. If there's, if there's some uh, extenuating circumstance, again, that will all be spelled out. Uh, 
and much like what uh, was brought up before about FEMA. So if you are not found eligible, you'll get a letter that will spell out exactly why you're not, uh, uh, you're not eligible. Um, and by the same token, many times when that, if that, if that letter is generated quickly, it's, it's usually because a piece of paperwork is missing, one of the required pieces of paperwork is missing. But we do encourage folks to, to continue to apply, to come back in, take that sheet of paper that you got from us, uh, email, and come into a business recovery center and work with somebody or call the number, which is 800-659-2955. Uh, you can also send an email to, um, to Disaster Loan Assistance uh, at sba.gov or um, <coughs> sba.gov. Let's see, our email address is um, Disaster Loan Assistance at sba.gov. So you can reach us by phone, email, or come in person. Tim, can you? Spell your last name for me. Yes, A C C U R S O. On the second page of the. I'm of the sorry, page two. I'm, I'm just I okay. myself am okay. Doc Colchester, so okay. I'm not Good. that far away. Thank you. Uh, you know, so I'd be happy to, to meet with uh, anyone. I'd be happy to if you have any kind of a, um, you know out, outreach events where you'd like me to you know to uh, to present at or hand out information. How about Wednesday night? Uh, you available? Uh, we're having a, I'm the flood zone administrator in town, mm -hmm. and we're, we're help holding a meeting for all stakeholders to try and explain the whole works. Um, I mean, everybody has been flooded or affected by it. Uh, what time on Wednesday? It's, it's at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, and, uh, and that's, that's in the uh, elementary school. Yeah, I, I have uh, Wednesday night, I'm down in. I can get someone here though. That'd be great. Though. If you'd like, yeah. I love that. Let me give you some handouts. Yeah, I'm supposed to be. I'm going to be in Middlebury at the middle of my house. Mm -hmm. But that's no Middlebury is five. I can maybe be up there. So. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, somebody from SBA would be great. Okay. Thank okay. you. And you are Howard Romero. Howard. <coughs> Seven p.m. On, uh, you have email. I'll, I'll just send me. I'll give you my. Carl card. can connect to you. Hmm? Carl can connect to you. Okay. Yeah, I've got his card. Okay. Um, good ad, Howard. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions while we're here? I wanted to ask about credit, and you asked it, so. Read your mind. Uh, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Did I hear you right <clears throat> in, in that if people can qual qualify for a private sector loan, then SBA loans don't apply? No, no. They're, no, you, so, you just get a higher interest rate. Yeah, you just get a higher interest rate. Okay. If you don't have the ability to get a loan or apply for a loan through a regular bank, it'll be a much okay. easier process with the SBA. So that's how the interest rates change. Right. Because if you can get a bank loan, then SPA is not SBA is not maybe the best avenue. Whereas if you can't get a bank loan, the SBA is a way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and that's the only specific. circumstance that changes the interest rate? Uh, yeah, the credit available also and that's that's stated here. Um, yes. Yeah. So if so, as it says here, um, and this is for business and personal, correct? Like, is it both circumstances? If an applicant has the ability to provide for his or her own recovery and is determined, that's determined when you have credit available elsewhere, and it it it, it doubles from like two and a half to five, from four to eight for interest. So basically, if I have enough home equity in my home, and well, my house has just been ruined, so maybe that doesn't apply yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I don't want, I, what I don't want is that to be any kind of a, a, um, a, a killer to, to go apply, to do talk to someone. And I again, think that's that already a work. frustration point, just yeah. so you know. Yeah. Okay. But we do want to be able to work with, you know, work with folks. Mm -hmm. so. But going through the application doesn't hurt, does it go on your credit report? It's a, it's, it's a knock on your credit report like any other, you know, when you do apply. That's, you know, I've heard folks say, is it a soft hit, is it a hard hit, it's a, you know, normal 
Sure. Like, like if you go to apply for a, a car loan, it's akin to that. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Can we have like a, a list of materials here uh, with everybody, Carly, Beverly? Uh, again, I Thank you. Wednesday night, or, or maybe I can send someone. Uh, Terrific. Uh, yeah. But we're. We're here to help, so again, I want to encourage anybody again to come into the center. Um, you know, because we really want to help. We we're here to help folks get back up on their feet. You know, and along the lines of what of what what others had said. You know, we know early on the last thing you want to do is come in and talk to a bureaucrat at the center. You know, when you have watery grounds and your contents are really, you know, nowhere to live. That type of thing. But so we've got that time there, the cushion, you know, in the application process. And then if you just <coughs> get your application started by the deadline, you know, we'll work with you. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you for coming. Thank oh, you for having me. Did you have something? I have a quick question. So a lot of the people that, a lot of the renters who were affected by this <coughs> lost everything. <coughs> and most of them don't have any renters insurance. Um, the things that they would want to be replacing could be as basic as clothes. Um, are you going to loan a renter, uh, you know, for clothes and non-durable yeah. goods? Yes, yeah, yes, because because that that is for you know for for personal for personal property contents of the home. Yeah, yeah, that's the forty thousand limit. Yeah, so two hundred thousand for property, forty thousand. Yes, for contents of the home, cars are included. Yeah, cars are yeah. included. Yeah, yeah, cars. Are it's interesting. Some of my renters have already gotten FEMA reimbursement, checks from FEMA, yeah. for for places to stay and for a loss. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, let's talk uh, all things flood floodplain regulation. This is the additional item. Um, that Duncan brought up, and yeah. okay, um, flood. What was your thought? What were your thoughts, Duncan? Well, um, and Howard is here, so you may have some thoughts on this too. My my question primarily relates to our existing floodplain zoning reg, um, and specifically in regard to that. There are a couple of things. Um, one is our ordinance was adopted in 98. Sounds about right. Uh, long time ago. Um, so it is woefully out of date. And having said that, I'm going to regret having said that, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, there, there are a couple of specific issues that we need to think about. Um, not the least of which is, if I'm reading the regulation right, and correct me if I'm wrong, Howard, if as a result of these inspections there is a determination that a property is more than 50% damaged, then the approval to rebuild in that location uh, falls upon a zoning board of adjustment and the property has to be built, brought up to the current floodplain, flood proofing regulations. We don't have a zone. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, but I'm also not positive about this. Um, Wednesday will be the, will we can all get that answer. Uh, but uh, my understanding is that in the event of substantial damage, not just damage, but substantial damage on a higher bar. Which is more than 50%. Which is more than 50% of the cost of the structure. Puts you into another pot of money in terms of, I don't think there's a downside to that, such as you have to rebuild the house according to the current map. The current map is, as you say, woefully out of date, and Rebecca Pfeiffer has sworn to me on a Bible that, she, that they're coming. But yeah, we've heard that for 15 years. Right, we have. <clears throat> yeah, that's just what she said. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, um, 
Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't think that's right. Nothing like spring. Well, I'm just going by what our zoning reg says. And our zoning oh, our reg zone, says our zoning regs. Our own zoning regs. Oh, I don't know. Let me know. I can help. Our I own zoning regulation says if if it is new construction, substantial improvement, or construction in a floodway, that gets approved by a zoning board of adjustment or a board of adjustment. Um, and it refers specifically to uh, NFPI, NFIP, NFPI yeah. uh, uh, regulations. So it's it's you know the federal code for the definitions. And if you read the definitions, I think I'm right. right. I could be wrong, and I hope I am. Um, but it has ramifications if, if, it, if there is a determination and if there's a pot of money that can help those people rebuild and meet their requirements, great. My, my initial point is we don't have a board of adjustment. Yeah, I was going to ask you who that was. We don't have one. There you go. Um, so that's a problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm raising it to this board because it would be this board that would essentially appoint a, a board of adjustment to uh, it, it, our, our, our zoning regulation, our floodplain zoning regulation refers to those uses as being conditional uses which are approved by a board of adjustment. This is probably Greek to most of you because you haven't had anything to, ever to do with zoning regulations, but I have uh, 20 plus ex years of experience with zoning regs and a conditional use is approved by, the, by a board of adjustment and there are criteria that have to be met in order for the board of adjustment to approve that. So our, our big issue right now is we don't have a, con we don't have a board of adjustment. We, there is a DRB specifically for the form-based code, and it would be possible, maybe, I'm not even sure about this, to assign the tasks and duties of acting as a board of adjustment to the DRB, but I would really think we ought to ask the current DRB members if they mm -hmm. want to do that. And if not, we need to appoint a board of adjustment because we don't have one. Can you remind me, Duncan, what um, what are the things that would trigger the board of adjustment review? Um, so new construction, um, um, substantial improvement, and construction within the floodplain. That's what so it new actually says. New construction outside the floodplain. No, it would be in either in, so f development within the floodway, there's floodway. the floodway and there's areas of special flood. Right, the 100 year. Yeah. The, flood, the floodway is the, is, the, is the most dangerous place to be. Right. right. And there, yeah, you, know, you, know, you basically can't do much of anything if you're actually in the floodway. Right. right. Um, which if is, you're in the special areas of which flood, is and those are mapped on the FEMA, on the firm maps, the federal insurance rate maps. Um, so if you're in that area and it's new construction within that area, that technically is a conditional use approval by a board of adjustment. Hmm. If it's substantial improvement, that is a conditional use approval by the zoning, by the board of adjustment. And if it is um, development in the floodway, then that is most definitely um, you know, approved, approved by, a, by a board of adjustment. And as, as I said, we don't have one. <clears throat> I, think that, I think it would be good to ha get those maps out to the general public. Well, floodplain, floodway. I so, um, yeah, sure. I mean, they're, 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 they're easy to copy. They're just, you know, black and white things. Yeah. Um, they're also available on the town website. Yeah, and state websites, and our house. All that maps. The firm maps are, are, are on the website? Yeah. Okay. They're, they're on the town website. Yeah. Nice. They're links to Now, I have just commissioned a map that you guys will, so whoever comes on Wednesday will get to see for the first time. It's a humdinger. It's got um, on, on all the Lamoil and the Guyon through the village and both to both borders. Um, every house 
uh, and its house number, and it also shows the floodway and the 100 year and the 500 year. So, the incorrect version? Well, the, 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 current, the old the, the current, current, current version. version. It is the incorrect version. Yes. The one we didn't experience, right? Right, that's the one we did. Right, that's the one. That's the one that didn't happen. They, those yeah. are the firm maps. Those are the firm maps, right? Yeah. Okay. The current firm maps. Well, yeah. they're not the 1984 maps. That's what we're working. That's with. what we're working with, and that's according to our bylaw. That's what yeah. we have to work with. Right. The new ones are coming any day, minute. But um, yeah. So that's the, so the, that map. Um, well, anyway, I was just thinking, Mark, that that would be a good one to show people. Yeah. Um, it's a really hard thing to copy because it's dense, but, but yeah. Interesting. Well, you you said you ha you're having a map made up that shows the location of every house that's within. So those will be the houses that get inspected, basically. Yes. I mean, I guess that would be a great map to have available on the website. We we can see it on. We already do. We have it linked. We, like we can see it if you go to the website and follow the state um, ARGIS. Yeah. It already has that. Like you yeah, can put a is. layer with the floodplain right. on Maybe top you can, of. But how many people can? Yeah. No, you can. You do have to be a little tech savvy. <laughs> Confident in your ability. Yeah. You do have to be a little tech savvy to navigate it all. It's yeah. true. Um, you have to check the box. Yes. One thing I was going to ask, Howard, yeah. is if you could maybe, I don't know if this is something you can do with technology or just manually, but just drawing on that map know, where know, the actual flood I hit in this most recent flood. I was going to sit down with Alex and see if we could figure that out. Because, you know, Comparing that with what we have for the existing floodplain, I think, would be very educational for a lot of people. Um, but for the meeting on Wednesday night, that just might add to the confusion which we have because there are a lot of more houses or, or buildings were flooded than are in the mapped flood plain. And this meeting about the substantial damage determination only applies to places within the flood plain and were flooded. Yeah, you're, you're right, yeah. So is that going to be clear, like, whether or not they're impacted at that meeting? <coughs> yes. I think so. Um, you can ask them their They're even down one, one address and be able to look right on it and say, Perfect. well, there you are. Yeah. And um, Rebecca produced a, yeah. a new map. I don't, did you see it this evening? No, I haven't. Okay, about... At 5.30 this evening, she sent out a couple of maps where um, they're clearer than what we were looking at before. And one of the points I was going to make tonight was it looks like there's a lot less work with these inspections than we were previously thinking. Because okay. surprisingly, not everything on River Road West is in the floodplain. Yeah. And on Railroad Street, basically it's from the library, both sides back out towards Main Street. Whereas just about everything on Railroad Street was flooded, everything on River Road West was flooded. So there's a, a reduction in work based on what I saw in those maps. But we should, could clarify that with, with Rebecca tomorrow it's, or yeah. Wednesday. Is there any thought to what we're going to tell the people who inevitably show up to this meeting and are not? Yes, we're, we're planning for the in, the well, in the in the mapped floodplain. Well, they got to be told by somebody. That's correct. I'm just I'm wondering what the next but we, but, step is for. But, well, the next step is is that's a good question. That's another that's a side step, if you will. For us, this the next step is to do the determination, and that's as Carl says, that's that's in the floodway, and anything that's that, that's outside of the floodway, we're not going to draw near. And that that can that can we can only do that in the context of are adopted regulations. That's right. So so all of that. We know that those maps are really badly out of date and wrong, but there really isn't anything that we can do from a zoning ordinance standpoint. Those people are obviously well aware of the fact that they got flooded um, and the maps are wrong, but we, we can't. Does that change eligibility for anyone to receive any benefits? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either, but that's one of the things we'll put to the stakeholders tomorrow. Um, 
what it what it does change is the eligibility in the national flood insurance program. Right. Okay. Yeah. You've got to be within those zones. Am I right on that? Yeah. Right? You've got yeah. to be within well, those. Carl just zones. said something that made me think of another fine tuning of that list. So you start out with 500, then you go down to the map, and you end up with 250. And then the last thing that I heard for excluding your SD calculation is homes built before 84. So the, the NFIP map has a date on it when it was published. Anything built before, I think there's a historic home exclusion. Yeah. So that would further lower the risk of having more people needing permits and upgrading their properties. So in an older town like Johnson, there might be very, very few. By the time you get done triaging everything, it could be very I can't think of like a whole through line right here. Two newer than that. Newer than me. Okay. Anything else we need to cover for this topic? What is the next step? So well, we the next step. One thing that I think maybe we put on our list of, of long term plans is mm -hmm. whether or not we do anything with this flood zoning regulations because as as I said it's fairly out of date. Is this something that LCPC can help us with, since they've helped us with many a uh, flood mitigation project? I actually have a copy of a draft ordinance, a model ordinance. Of course you do. VLCT, <laughs> right? No, it's, oh. it's actually, it's, it's, it's something that I think the state right. has done some work on, LCPC has done some work on. Um, the one that I'm, I'm really nervous about the river corridor concept. Um, the river cor corridor concept, I, I think, when FEMA does its rate maps, they're probably going to look a lot like the river corridors, in essence. So all of those properties that you're referring to that are out of the flood zone now are going to be in it when you know when the new F FEMA maps sure. come out. Hopefully. Um, well, yeah. Yes. Why are you nervous? Because the draft ordinance that the ANR came up with, with the river corridor concept, A, it didn't relate, the river corridors did not relate to the, the firm maps. So there's a real disconnect between the firm maps and the river corridor delineations of the flood. And there were also a lot more restrictions on the, on the river corridor flood zoning regulation. And I remember, uh, you know, this was when I was still working, so it was six years ago. I remember being very nervous about um, the ramifications of pretty much the entire village being in a river corridor and the impositions that were going to be placed on individual properties in terms of having to, you know, be flood compliant. I'm also nervous about the entire village being in the river corridor for different reasons. It's in the river corridor. It's in the river corridor. <laughs> yeah. um, it, 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 I, I get that, and, and I understand that. And, that, and I, I suspect that when the new FEMA maps come out, they're going to look a lot like the river corridor that have been do, done by ANR. And to me, that's perhaps a better time to have that conversation about. Yeah. Um, I agree, Duncan. Okay. okay, but it's, yeah. Um, just to clarify, though, Duncan, the um, model ordinance you were talking about was the one that you got from Tasha Wallace. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that one is that one is not based on the river corridor concept. It's based on current current or future firm maps. Right. So if if the firm maps are a year out or two years out or ten years out, um, in theory they become adopted as part of the ordinance when it, when it comes to. But for the immediate purposes. Unless I'm greatly mistaken, Howard's going to give us a resignation tonight. That means we need to think about who's going to replace him. And the other one, we, we have to. We're just not going to talk anymore. Um, <laughs> we'll just look this way. <laughs> just uh, All right, <laughs> next talk. Uh, 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 <laughs> so I'm curious. Well, the um, let me get my words in the revised maps that we are going to see at some point from a number of different people, different sources, 
Well, they include the deterioration of our river banks after events like this because we've been losing. I don't know. You know, it depends time. on the overflight was done to, you know, the LIDAR and all like that. Because we don't send their surveyors out anymore like we did in 84 to, you know, get every foot of so, the mm -hmm. river section. Uh, I don't know when the, when the, we won't know that, I guess, until we see the maps and we find out when they were flowing. You know? The uh, University of Vermont has Johnson on its list to do LIDAR flyover of your damaged village area. So we don't know the schedule of that. It was something ANR offered and uh, UVM has got 30 days from July 14th or something to do all their flights under some FEMA emergency response funding. So they're not charging Johnson, but it had to be done within the 30 days. So uh, I talked to Carl briefly, we put Johnson in. Good, so they got scheduled on Friday. There's no schedule, but it got put on their two-week schedule list. So they should be doing that soon. But that'll answer part of your question. When the FEMA maps do come out, digital version, all that stuff, you'll have 30 or 60 days to appeal and get into the details of that. So sure. yeah. that's the time to bring up, this map is totally wrong. We had a flood and changed the water course by 300 feet. These properties that were totally out are now in, and that obviously that slows the map process down, but you do want them to be accurate from day one, whenever they do get finalized. When, when we did the walk around um, last week, with LCPC and uh, the engineers that LCPC is working with, they, I think, they were going to try and, we have a couple of known elevations of the, of the flood water at its maximum level, mm -hmm. and I think you could replicate that. Across. I mean, we have it all over the village. They're still there. Well, yeah. If you look at well, I think lines. on a map, you could, if, mm -hmm. you, if we got the actual elevation, then mm -hmm. it would be a fairly simple matter mm -hmm. on a GS, in a GIS. Oh. Absolutely. It's as normal as the topographic. And there you yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that would be. Is that something that they were talking about during that tour? Yes. And I don't remember. Do you remember what the net result of that conversation was? Did, did you get the impression they were going to? create a map like that, or should we request it? Or? Maybe we could request that they actually do it. I think it was more about a conversation about, oh, we can see here where the, the water level was on the municipal building, and so what does that mean, how deep it was on either side of Route 15, and you could see how deep it was down at the intersection of 15 and Railroad Street. So yeah. what does that mean, where, where, how deep was it in other points? Well, LCPC certainly has. They have our, you know, ArcGIS capability. They can, they if we could provide the data point, you know, the elevation point, they could create a map that shows the 2023 I would I would argue, Duncan, that um, finding a point like on Sterling Market, say it was here. That doesn't necessarily transfer to the whole town because no, you have to find different points around the village. Right, because because of the way the Lamoil came up and pushed the guy on back, people on the guy on got a lot more flooding than they ever have. That doesn't necessarily mean it flooded more downriver or to the same degree downriver, because you're talking about a moving river, two moving rivers actually. But at some point, water equalizes. Yeah, you're going to have to consider it as a flat lane at some point. Just I mean, literally, when Evan and I were driving around a couple days after the storm, flat plane doesn't exist when you have big currents. Because we literally saw water that was higher than the road we were driving on at one point off, hog, off Hogback. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's yeah. the point I was trying to make. Yeah, the, that's true. The currents in the confluence of the two rivers change. Don't necessarily make water equal. Yeah. yeah. But it would, um, if nothing else, it'll give you a good idea. It's yes. better data. Yeah. It's better data for what will flood long term. Yeah. Yeah. And just you know, one final point on the, on the zoning, just just to give you a, an idea of the complexities of this, the zoning reg that we currently have, and my understanding of the current model is for for the NF, uh, NFPI maps, the requirement is to build the base flood. The base level, the basement level, 
at at or above the base flood level. And that's new construction. It, it's anything. That's that's substantial improvement, new construction, right. yeah. uh, whatever. If it's if it's redevelopment of ex existing, the FEMA standard is base flood elevation plus one foot. The Act 250 um, uh, is is uh, base flood ele elevation plus two feet. Two feet. Wow. Two feet. Yeah, if, if we had if we had been two feet, the municipal building is base flood plus a flood. Had we been base flood plus two feet, we wouldn't have flooded. And Duncan, what did we do with the lower mobile home park after the 95 flood? I thought we came in, elevated all those they places. Were. And where was that? Base flood plus one foot? I or? don't know yes. that for sure. Yes. It was base plus a foot. Plus Sorry, but base flood equals how many year? Uh, uh, years? Base flood is 100 years. 100 years? 100 year plus a foot. Yeah. We built two. Yeah. And then the trailer is another 16 inches. And then, uh, at least, yeah. I don't know how, how high it was down there. I never. Well, it's about well, it so was, some of those units, it, it got two feet in it. Yeah, inside it, it, it John Gerard's house, it was up to his knees. Yeah. So I think when Eric Bailey was explaining they have floodgates on the wastewater mm -hmm. that, that are designed for plus four, mm -hmm. and they were plus eight. Mm -hmm. So that, that extra four feet, there's nobody that's going to be able to deal with that yeah. easily. Didn't they build those to the 95? Really they built those based on the, the hydraulic capacity of the building to withstand. In other words, if the floodgates had been any higher than that, there would have been a risk of the floodwaters imploding the building. The building, you got to. So those were designed. So they weren't really built to like a 100 year standard. No, right? they were built. They were built to fail. <laughs> they were, they were built. It was a structural standard. It was a structural standard, not, not a flood standard. Okay, um, we could be here all night talking about yeah. this, I'm pretty sure. We will be. I think we're gonna do another meeting, yeah. <coughs> well, so, draft, you said you have a draft. Do you, do you wanna just right? share that draft, Duncan, just to get us thinking I about what it should be? I can certainly share the draft with you, yeah. That'd be lovely, thank you. Are we accepting Howard's resignation? No. Well, well denied. I he has other things That's, he wants to well, say. Well, I, I do, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say this. It's, uh, Casey said, you know, you really gotta write the select board a note, just, each one of them, tell them you're going to resign. Uh, why? I mean, the fact of the matter is, I'll show up with a letter, I'll say, here it is, and I'm going to hand it to you back. <laughs> and what you do with it is your business. I really don't care. <laughs> Just don't expect me to show up after this. <laughs> That's all. Well, I, for one, am only willing to accept his resignation when I get the personalized letter, so. That's oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so you don't yeah. have a quorum yet. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> He's going to start writing right now. Um, you don't have a replacement Howard. either. Do I know. Yeah. What? What does this mean in the short term? What does this mean this week? Uh, good question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to run, run the meeting on. You all right with that, by the way? Yeah. Uh, run the meeting on Wednesday. And then officially, I'm done on the Thursday morning. Okay. Um, Rebecca Pfeiffer. So you don't want phone calls. We'll send everyone to your personal phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Emails. Okay. Yeah. So Rebecca uh, Pfeiffer. Re Rebecca. So before I, before I actually made the decision to pull the trigger on this, I asked Rebecca, "Am I leaving you in the lurch?" Because you know all these. We're talking that we we have been talking initially of the 90 uh, um, visits around the village that get this FEMA requirement out of the way. Uh, and um, even though that number does seem to be getting smaller all the time, it's still a big one. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't sign up for that 30 years ago or whenever it was. And I'm the only flood zone administrator this town's ever had, you know. I didn't even know we had one, so thank you. 1989, yeah. Maybe that's why we've had so many floods. I'm telling you. It was never a problem until I came <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it was after '95, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, um, and by the way, why did my house not flood? I know, right? Because right. was the administrator. Uh, well, that's it. You okay, so you're gonna go through. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. And that, so I'll be a bit. So she said that she's got teams that she's gonna bring in to do, to do the work that the town needs. Awesome. So thou shalt not worry. Okay. Okay. Um, 
uh, and I will start boxing up uh, all the paperwork and the forms and crap like that that I've got regarding this okay. job and make it available to the next person, and I'll have train the next person to do this. This is probably a stupid question, but did we pay you or anything? No. Oh, by the no, way, that's the something you guys have to decide tonight. Yeah, where did that fall? Uh, I don't know. But the select board has to make a something, a decision, well, I don't know, um, to say that the, the town, uh, what is it called? The town has to apply to FEMA to be reimbursed by whoever, whomever we hire to do this work for this, for this, for this thing, right? I mean, I'm at I want 30 bucks an hour for what I've done, and I'm not going to charge any more. But I mean, you know, I mean that's 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 me. I would like to have that. Um, that was uh, the uh, RPA, yeah, which was submitted last week with Rosemary's help to ask for help, which begins all these different for the for that section 1206 fund. funding too. No, that's the, the the town submitted a general request for public assistance. Assistance, which is the RPA. Yeah. Under that is 1206. Okay. What Power of Power is talking about, which is administration of your bylaw. Right. Which is, Rebecca has potentially some direct state funds to do that too, but it's not a guarantee between FEMA or the state helping towns. The select board's ultimately responsible to make sure it happens. So if Rebecca's got a team that's probably that's no cost to the town. Right. If that fails for some reason, then the town can go ahead and do that and have. A team of people themselves to do the same work. But if Rebecca's willing to come in, that's probably the best answer. Yeah. It, it still will need a local board of adjustment. So yeah. this only gets you to the 50% question, it doesn't get you to the permit question, which is still the time. How large does the board of adjustment need to be? Uh, according to state statute, a minimum of three and a maximum of nine. How do you know this? Because he um, he reads and he remembers when he stopped working. He kept <laughs> it just working. Means he stopped working for pay. If you, if you don't do it, it might be the select board taking on that job. Uh, so yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. 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 that sounds like a lot of fun. I just heard three. Three. Of I, that. Three to nine. Between three and nine. I heard like justice of the pieces or somebody. Somebody said something like that, right? Okay. If you hold um, a meeting, they're bound. But but I guess my off. point is that I believe you guys have to take some sort of action to be able to be reimbursed by FEMA for what is that what is that what is that action Ron? Uh, is, is section, right? well it's a two-part question the RPA starts it out the 1206 applies if you follow those rules then administrators can be paid for their time so it's really a set of rules 12, section 1206 so it's more a question of submitting the proper right reimbursement you, it's just like hiring dumpster movers and everything it's the same kind of thing if you hire a staff. So we probably aren't great at all of these things. What does that mean for logging the time associated with doing the inspections? Like what specifically of, is required? All of that. All of that has to be logged. Just like uh, Jason. It has to be logged, meaning time, addresses, you have to make, you have to visited. A, you have to make a choice. There's the volunteers. There's paid staff that's already on your staff. And there's contractors over the state of Vermont and FEMA. So whoever's doing that work should be logging their time because it's eligible. It's only eligible for 180 days. So once that 180 days falls out, so does the uh, reimbursement under 1206. So if it's paid staff that's doing these inspections, their payroll could serve as the record. Right. It's contractors, it should be their bill. Yep. Mm -hmm. If the state is providing the assistance, would that be considered? Contractors. I wonder if Rebecca is offering this so that she could get 50% reimbursement for some of her staff for this time. Yeah, or 100%, yeah. Okay. So but we'll have to ask about that. Yeah. It's, so it's is just it safe to say it was on hearing tonight, so I was not aware she was planning to hands. send the teams. What, what's that, Duncan? Is it safe to say that we can leave the question of reimbursement, paperwork, et cetera, in Carl and Ron's capable hands? I think that's a good thing, going back to what uh, Beth was saying earlier about the whole flood event. As soon as you can assign 
some of the things that you're getting brief on yourselves to other people. Let them run with it for a couple weeks and report back. There's really no reason to have it weekly or whatever, once you assign it. Right, right. If you're going to keep it on your desk because yeah. of the town administrator vacancy or whatever, like you did for dumpster management, uh, that's fine. But as soon as you I was just pure adrenaline at that. That fades, though, pretty quickly, right? <laughs> so the quicker you can start to identify those things and assign it, just let, let those people carry on. Yeah. It should free up some of your time. So I guess we haven't okay. answered Howard's original yep. request. Can you let Carl know what you worked for hours? Sure, of course. That, 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 you would be hired as a contractor if we conceptually agreed with it. So it would be available for reimbursement. Yeah, and you could hire him as an emergency or temporary employee, whatever, whatever he's set up for. Yeah. Probably a temporary employee to work on the 1206 work. That's just educating. Well, they've already, they've already got, you know, they already take taxes out of my eye for poll work and stuff like that. So, so you're on the books, right? I'm on the books, yeah. Right, right. So you yeah. probably should have a, if you wanted to for show what? that what? to FEMA, you guys are just because oh. he's been paid in the past for reimbursements and things. You, you talked earlier about the lack of uh, proof on your floodplain administrator. You probably want to have a motion tonight to officially appoint Howard for the floodplain administrator just so that's on FEMA and maybe backdated to July 1st or something. Oh, wait a minute, that's not the only way I wanted it to go. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have I'm an trying, end date. I'm trying to back out. You're, you're trying to resign. That's really, that's really tricky, Ron. Yeah, I love we're it. trying to pay you for the time before you resign. I know, I know. But that's okay. Do yeah. you, you think there would be a historical record of the original appointment of Howard as his own administrator? I think it was back in the 80s. It may have been. Okay, yeah. let's not, yeah, I like Ron's idea much better. Let's not spend our time on digging out something that is buried, maybe. Right. Um, so do we want to go that route? So Motion let me, let to me retroactively understand. reappoint Howard Romero as a point, the... Appoint, appoint, not reappoint. No, I said retroactively appoint. We haven't officially accepted As of July 1, 2023. I gotcha, okay. So it would be through retroactive what? Through backwards. Wednesday? Through this Wednesday, though, that you're in? For, yeah. sh for sure. In there. Yeah, we can just appoint him through Wednesday, what Ron's suggesting. With an ending date of Wednesday, August 9th. Uh, mid at midnight or something, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how long this week is. Okay, we have, wait, 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 we have a motion. We're, we're getting we motion. awful. Can you come with Oh, me? second. Thank you. What is the motion again? Uh, to appoint Howard as. Uh, Johnson's flood zone administrator from July 1, 2023 to August 9th, 2023 at midnight. And we, we have a second. second. We already have a yeah. second. So it's time for discussion. Could, could we have the minutes reflect that Howard has in the past been appointed as the flood Yes, yeah, they're reflecting it right now. Can we, Donna? Donna? Yeah. yeah. I think the pay okay. issue is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, you can say um, 89 documentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for the purpose of pay. So it's been made and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Eyes have it. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is going to We don't so even need it. You're a temporary. Uh, I don't give a red test. This is fun. <laughs> yeah. You actually oh, did put something together? I wrote, yeah, I wrote a letter. Oh, it's not, ha it's not handwritten. Two days to type it. That's not handwritten. I think we're following. Howard, you Okay, we're behind. Yep. What? Next up. Consider approving library use for well, space. We didn't accept his resignation. Okay. Do you want to accept it? Motion to accept Howard Romero's resi resignation. From Second. The All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, we had one for so long. Okay, thank you, With Howard. With regret. With regret. Yeah, should we send him a card? Just give it to him. Yeah, yeah, let's send him a card. <laughs> a get well card. Yeah, a trophy. I want a trophy. Get well soon. Should we send it to Maine? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You guys need pizza. You want you can have pizza on the way out. Okay. Uh, consider approving agreement for library use of space in Masonic Temple. Thank you. Gene. <laughs> Welcome, Gene. 
Would you like to fill in any <coughs> additional information around the use of the Masonic Temple? Uh, did you get the letter, the uh, letter from the Masonic Temple from the Masons? Oh, yes. Did we get yes. Oh, from the packet. Oh, that's why I don't remember seeing it. Okay. You did. So, they don't have an end date, which is good for the town. Uh, when it says pay insurance, we're just talking about making sure PSIF covers us, right? Or do they want some extra insurance paid for? Well, they're just ex expecting that town's covering its property there and we have to uh, make sure that there's liability coverage for the library operation right. in the basement. And you checked with PSIF already? Uh, on or the contents, passive? we Sorry. did. When they first moved over, I have to still notify PASSIVE about the uh, liability part of it. They could meet in the steeple because we own the steeple. That would be awful small. <laughs> is, is, passive, be. <laughs> is PASSIVE okay with... I understand that they're okay with the storage of the books there. Are they okay with the operation of a fund? No, I still library? have to notify them of that part that now the library is going to operate out of the basement and make sure that the liability coverage transfers over to that location without any extra work or expense. And we should probably be careful how that's worried to them because we want to make sure that the building a, is still covered. It's going to have to be an additional risk location yeah. because we still have to have that liability coverage on the library. On the building. Yeah. yeah, so it will be an additional so risk. Be an additional. Is that, I can't cost much more. I don't know, but I, I would be willing to make a motion to approve the request contingent on passives ability to provide insurance or additional insurance at that location. Yeah, I'd second that. With no caps. Right, no, do we not? No don't... caps on insurance costs. Right, that's what my question is too. Like, I, I think okay, it's well, a great idea and I'm supportive, but that motion would be passive could come back and say it's gonna cost $10,000 a month for an additionally insured location. Probably will be more than a thousand for a year. I understand, but we don't know. That's that's my question. Is there a cap? Yeah. I wasn't proposing one, but per perhaps we should see an actual proposal from Gene. When when were you hoping to open to the public? Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on time. So you guys have already moved in there and been doing a bunch of stuff. Where I take it. Books are being stored in there, but we would like to. Start getting the space ready, which involves a lot of moving of books, boxes of books. So the sooner we know, the better, so that we can open to the public. Would you be open to a friendly amendment with at um, at a cost of with a cost no contingent on passives for, uh, cost being no more than. Fifteen hundred a year. I could get behind five grand. I don't care. But, oh, or five. Okay, or like five thousand. I, I guess I think it's a great idea, and I'm supportive. I want a cap on the motion yeah. for yeah. me to support the motion as a whole. And I think that should be reimbursable too for temporary quarters. So just on the back side, it doesn't deal with your first part, which is what Ed was talking about. But yeah. cost of relocation, temporary, should be covered. We're gonna meet next week. Probably, yeah. Evan I would, doesn't want to, but he might not be here. I would withdraw my motion oh. and make a new motion. I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. Which would be to ask Carl to solicit a specific proposal from Passive to allow the operation of the library mm -hmm. in the Masonic Hall, which would include the fee or cap that we could then review on Monday night. So in the meantime, they can't get in there? Well, I think I don't have any issue with them. I don't, I, my personal opinion is they shouldn't open to the public if 
there's no insurance coverage. But if they if they want to go in and organize books and well, I, mean, I think it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to happen. You know, I think it's I think it's a coverable thing. It would just make sense. We could we can do a cap and do it tonight, but we have no idea what that cap is going to be. You know, why don't we things. pick a big number and just put a cap on it so we don't have to talk about it again in a week? In a week. I like Beth's idea. If we don't have to talk about it again and we limit our agenda items, I am happier because it means we can accomplish more. Here's an odd. Here's an odd question. Okay. Give you an adjusted bill through December 31st, so that's probably what that cost adjustment is what you're talking about through the end of the year. Will be a will be under five thousand dollars. I'm pretty sure, but that can be revisited in a week if it's not. You, you don't want to go forward without VLCT coverage, and they'll give you the price at that time. Are we still paying insurance on the existing library? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. so building. Hey, what were we gonna say? Nothing. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we authorize Carl to add the Masonic Temple for Library use as an additional risk location um, so that they can operate with paying out no more than um, $5,000 through the end of the year or our renewal term if it's more, if it's is it FEMA reimbursable? It should, so. should be. All second. Yeah. Any discussion? Would, would that, um, would occupancy for the purposes of the library be contingent on the issuance of a favorable Yeah, that's capacity? a friendly amendment. Well, I mean, I think that's on the, that's on the proposal from Waterman, so I mean, I don't think that's something we need to worry about. That's we can still add it. Yeah. Okay. Accept it. Sure. Okay. You good, Donna? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? Did you say up to five thousand? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay. So did that motion include approving the the um, lease? Temporary lease or? No, not a lease. <coughs> very specific. Is this actually a lease? Not. Um, use of space agreement. So. Motion to uh, authorize Carl to execute the use of space agreement with Waterman Lodge number 83. Dated July 31st, 2023. I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I said I in harmony. Okay. So, so let me just be clear. I, so like where are we? I will hear from you. Carl will get back to you on both items. Both the, well, you're good on the rental. Karma. Carl will sign on behalf of the board if the Masonic Temple needs a signature. He's authorized to do that. He's also going to follow up on insurance and we'll let you know. And if it's and less if, than five grand? If it's less than five grand through the end of the year, you're good to go. If it's more than that, it'll need to come back to the select board. But it sounds like it'll be considerably less than that. And Gene, I probably should have asked this before we approve the, the agreement. But how? What will the what will the basis of the electric wastewater, internet and heat be? Is that a prorated cost? Because there there aren't separate meters for that. They currently you know have their own water and sewer bill, but it's uh, minimal use because they don't use the building very much. I think they just get charged the minimal fee for electric and sewer. So I think anything in addition will be most likely the library because they don't really use the building that much. So we'll be paying their water and sewer bill. In its entirety, or? I would expect, but I don't know. I would. It runs about, for both of them, um, well, I guess that's up to you. Both of the bills run about $80 a month. 
together. One is 30 and one is 50. So plus whatever use the library has on top of that. Mm -hmm. But they're not charging us rent. So I kind of assumed that we would pay the total uh, water and sewer bill. Is there internet there, Jane? There is not internet, but I am in touch with Comcast, and I'll know on, <laughs> on Thursday. I'm, I'm making progress. You can transfer <laughs> yours over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll be able to transfer. The library's Comcast you know, right. account transfers over with you, right? Yes, and we have free internet, so they are working on transferring it for the time that we're in that space. And then when we move us back to the building, it will be transferred back. And there should not be a charge for that, for that movie. Cool. Now, I'm certainly okay with the idea of us paying the electric water and sewer and the internet you're dealing with. The heat part, I'm sure they must keep some minimal level of heat in there. It drains. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say that we are very high up on our agenda list still. Considerably behind. And we're, we are very, very behind. It's okay, we're kind of in day 35. Okay, um, so is there anything else we need for the library? So the heat question I had thought about, but if they're not permanently in the library, that heat bill will be lower. I would assume the library's budget could handle heating the Masonic temple. So that's an extra expense and it's reimbursable. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard to tell. I think we should thank Waterman Lodge too for the offer of yeah. having the library reside there. So, certainly. Cards to the lodge and the power. Um, and by the way, I haven't forgotten, we have thank you cards for a whole list of people who've helped with flood response. And we actually do need to get those going, but not tonight. Good idea. Um, okay, anything else in the library? Do you have anything else, Jean? I do have a signed copy of the letter, if, anyone, if you need that. The one you have is not signed. Carl has authorization to execute it. Thanks for your work figuring this out, Jean. Okay, um, report on federally <coughs> required substantial damage determination process. Oh. Skip it. Well, you sort of Skip had it. that discussion. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to say that's kind of Howard's. Kind of did have that okay, next. <laughs> Consider waiving first tax installment penalties and interest for flood properties. I think this is quick, isn't it? I don't know. You tell me. My read is we can't do it. Did you get any more information, Carl? Yes, the town of, I'm sorry, the attorney from VLCT Mac that talked to me last week did call this afternoon and said that he did talk with the other attorneys there and they all agreed with his first impression that that you you can't just wave it on your select board, can't just wave it on your own. Um, you do need to go through the the abatement process but he did say that if you want to try to make it easier for people that um, a town official could sort of, um, let's say, be a case manager, and we used that term earlier, could do this on behalf of an owner. Get to, you know, fill out the, the form and just have the person sign off that they're requesting an abatement. Okay. Now... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did some letters go out? No, some letters have gone out. No letters have gone out. I would be very supportive of uh, yeah, proactively sending letters to everyone who is affected and letting them know that they can request an abatement. You really like meetings, don't you? Um, could those go out with the electric bills? Did the village work with us on those? No, an abatement, that's a well, you can abate you can abate in whole or in part. So you could abate the board of civil authorities could abate the taxes and interest. The board of abatement. Or the board of abatement. Sorry. Yeah. See. 
There's so many. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the question I have is probably a practical one. Rosemary probably has an answer. Typically, if you pay, you pay taxes, I mean, ideally, we do it once, not every quarter. Um, and how, how is somebody going to know, how are we going to know what the value of the, how much taxes should be abated? We can't adjust the value. All we can do is abate taxes. So we have to sort of back into it based on how much destruction or devaluation there was to the property to therefore determine how much to abate their taxes. I think I thought we were just talking about interest and penalties. Well, but somebody might somebody may well come in and say, my property's, you know, seventy five percent wrecked. Yeah. That's um, a lot longer. That's two hearings, isn't it? That's two hearings? What are you talking about? Well don't don't they come before the board of abatement with the form and then three members of the board of abatement no, have to do that's, no, that's, that's, yeah. that's BCA tax appeals. Board of it. <laughs> you can abate oh. taxes for, for a substantially damaged property like fire or flood. That um, is forgiveness. But, but you can't adjust the base value. You can just abate the taxes or a portion of the taxes. So that's oh, okay. part of my question yeah, yeah, yeah. is yeah, yeah, yeah. nine months from now. Well, they're both true. I mean, Evan is kind of right. It could go to both boards. Well, only if we extend the deadlines for filing an appeal of Which taxes. What? You can't do that. That's pat way past. And the state. That was back uh, in June. Oh, well, okay. yeah, but you can because there's an emergency provision that allows the board to to change the deadline for filing a grievance which only is in effect until such time as there is a, an emergency declared by the state. Yeah, I think I, you're chewing around a couple of points. I think from a, from our COVID, right? So you have a whole bunch of tools that you could do in response to people's pain, so to speak, with things that you do have control over under state law. And I think Carl and I could probably uh, reactivate. Does the oh, state of emergency still yeah, exist? Right. Like, that should be on the list tonight, too. But regardless of that state of emergency, Carl and I can put together a sort of an options no, list for the select board to consider what you're really trying to do, which is ease the Next pain week. of people that are damaged. But you can only extend the deadlines if a state of emergency exists. I'm, I'm not saying anything about what the triggers are. I'm just saying we could bring you that menu. To save time tonight, we can bring you those options. The yeah, we need to do it next week because we need to also talk about. I have a question and I don't want to answer it right now, but we declared a state of emergency. We never ended the local. And I understood that the state declaring a state of emergency trumped our stating the state of emergency. So I don't know where we fall right now. I don't want to get into it right now, but I think the we do need to understand clear. that. Okay. You're going to stay in it until this. State until, until the state ends. Okay, so um, just just let's. But let's get that menu of that that you're talking about, like those options. Let's get that put together, and we'll bring it next. Do we time. really want? Yeah, we need to understand it. What's the short answer, I guess, Do from your side of things? Uh, if it were up to me, I wouldn't extend the deadlines to to appeal or reduce the raise value. And the main reason I say that is because I suspect that 99% of the properties within the year are going to be back to their original values. I, I agree. Would, I would argue, Duncan, that they will never go back to their original values. In which case they can appeal next year. Right. That's what I would say. Because I would say a property that has been flooded that's never flooded is now worth substantially less because it's going to be in a flood zone. It's going to the banks are going to demand flood insurance, which is going to decrease the value of property. Which, which can be, you yeah. can appeal, you can grieve your taxes on an annual basis. Okay. So next year when you get your tax bill, you could, you could grieve your assessed value. Yes, I agree. So I think we landed on... We're not doing... 
So I think we'll just land it on if somebody wants to abate, they can submit a form. And if they want to, what is the other word for reassessing? That's Green. that. If they well, they can't agree with the assessment. They're past that deadline at this They're point. Past that deadline, yeah. yeah. So abatement is the only option that is currently viable if folks want to abate for um, forgiveness of interest and late fees and that kind of thing. The option is that we could own a lot of mobile homes. Okay. And uh, a quick note about earlier, uh, I forget who even brought it up. I'm supportive of letting citizens know there's an option here. I'm not supportive of town employee filling the form out for them. Like uh, they can assist, but just going I don't really care if a town employee for everybody. personally fills it out because we've seen confusion over filling it out in the past and it caused a delay in us acting, which I'm not really in favor. I think we should assist if we can, personally. I think there's a, there's, I, I agree that, I agree that we should assist where we can. The issue that I have is if, it, if it's, if we're just talking about abating interest in penalties, that's one thing, which probably could be a fairly pro forma type of thing. Mm -hmm. However, if somebody, if somebody's thinking about it, they're going to say, you should abate my taxes for half a year because, you know, my, my property is not going to be up to its value for half a year. And that's, I don't think we should be involved in that. Well, we shouldn't be so, advising. We should just be helping fill out the form. They do. They check the property destroyed. And when you have a hearing, they bring those points up to for. Right. We and make. I think that's the way it ought to yes. go. Yeah. Right. We, we can't make any decisions. This is entirely the BCA if they decide to go down that Correct. route. Correct. Um, I'll make a motion uh, that we have Rosemary draft a letter and send it out to all flood affected uh, residents, letting them know of their rights to uh, ask for an abatement. We have a motion. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Did we already do that? Or did you just tell us you were going to do it? But I just need a, a list of the affected. Of the affected problems. And can you get that from the village? Because it's, it's really, pay, it's can we just? Only, only just build people up. There's some there are some outliers too. There's yes. like five outliers or something. Very few. Yeah. We were released. Carl no, we have the there. We have the names and addresses. Actually, yeah. Um, okay, great. So you can get it from Carl. Yeah. Perfect. And that's mailing address and it not the 911 address. Correct mailing address because you have let's say out of state okay. owners. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so I'm already doing it. Do we even need a motion? Don't need one motion. Okay. We have a motion. We vote. We already have it. Active. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. Okay. Uh, review of FEMA, a FEMA reco cost recovery. Speaking of cost recovery, keep track of the postage. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that should go under your your flood tag. Uh, Ron will attend and give an update on preparations. Ron, thanks for coming out tonight. What are you doing guys. every other Monday of the month? <laughs> You're just passing out paper right now? Go with the breeze. Look at all this paper so, I already have. This is a uh, proposal, I guess, to provide Thank updates you. to you at your regular meetings, just so you have something that's not a timesheet or not remembering what an email said or all that kind of fun stuff. Thank you. Um, it's a really quick, I think, yeah, I think you asked for that. <laughs> So you can, you're good with just providing these every week? Uh, your regular meetings was the intention. Oh, once a month or twice, twice every other week. Yeah, whatever okay. your regular meeting. So I think the idea is that, going back to what Beth was saying, during the breaks between your regular meetings, there's still a lot of stuff happening. Questions pop up, FEMA comes in, A&R comes into town, Carl's dealing with some business owner that needs help. You know, there's all this stuff that's going on. But what I was, focusing on is kind of two different 
perspectives of what you're going through. I'm looking at reimbursement. What are all the things you need to be doing now to make it easier later? Who needs to be involved with that process? What does Carl put on invoices that FEMA wants to see put on invoices? All those kind of details. And Rosemary's been really good about collecting the information, which is invoices and payroll sheets. I'm meeting with Jason tomorrow to go over some of the things I know FEMA's going to want to see when they actually do assign somebody. We're still waiting for that FEMA person, case manager again. <laughs> Who's that going to be? Don't know. I think sometimes it can make a big difference. Something that's helpful or not helpful. So those are the things that I was trying to. If we get somebody who's not good, we should complain right away and get somebody who's good. That, it's a long relationship with that person. We went through three people when the Halloween storm, and each one of them would tell me this totally opposite thing the prior person. To me. <laughs> so that makes it uh, doubly fun. Uh, the other thing, uh, which is really just from watching how things are unfolding, is worrying about the next time. I guess, to a certain degree. So debris management plan, don't have one. Uh, flood plane response guidebook, we don't have, you know, you don't have um, order of adjustment for flood permits, you don't have one. You know, there's certain things that are missing that really would help. They're not very complicated, but it takes a little time to put them in place, have staff aware of it, and things like that. So there's templates out there, the ordinance update is you know, potential out there, depending on where you want to go. So there's all these things out. So that's a smaller component, if you will. But I wanted to make sure that that is okay. <laughs> it was it was a little piece in the agreement for me to come in and start looking at things, but it, focusing on reimbursement, trying to get that that thing going eventually. Um, but if you don't want to hear those sort of soft things, which aren't necessarily going to be reimbursed, but are more like the next time we should have this in place already. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on it, but it's one of those things where I know where something can help you get to that discussion point where you're going to be on a board saying, well, now we're already 90% there. We just have to figure out if we exempt historic buildings from our new flood ordinance or not. You know, those kind of decisions. I say throw all those things at us. And don't, if you're not spending a ton of time on them, it's cool, but throw them at us. Because because we might decide not, like we just don't have time right now or whatever, but at least they're out in the ether and we can yeah, pull them. Choose. And electronic yeah. is better in uh, that regard. Too. I was going to ask, have you emailed us the, um, the debris management plan and the flood response guide that you drafted? <laughs> the part of my discussion, so when we talked about starting this, uh, Carl, uh, through the TOJ administrator, email would be sort of my conduit. Okay. But we're not quite sure, and I'm not quite sure what you all want to do with that other than Carl collect it all. And then at some point you'll say, there's something, there's time on the agenda maybe. Uh, let's pull one of those things off. So I don't know, that's a management thing that, I can still keep sending things, but mm -hmm. your question is better for Carl. I think. Gotcha. I would remind you of the four stages of emergency management, response, recovery, planning, mitigation. You're still in the recovery phase. We've been talking a lot about planning things tonight. You could make note of those so that in your um, corrective action or debriefing, when you get towards the end of this recovery phase, you could bring up these various points like the debris management plan, uh, updating the, f the floodplain ordinance and so on, and deal with that kind of stuff later. You, so you don't have too much on your plate, too much on your mind because you still are in the recovery phase. Um, there's a lot to be doing. Suggestion, yeah, I didn't get to speaking yet, but I, I, uh, on this topic, <laughs> uh -oh. I like the suggestions. Um, you were asking like personal thoughts on the little things, like the suggestion of, do you guys want to have a debris management plan? Great question, drafting one. Uh, personally, I don't, I think that's what we're contracted exactly for. I'm not heavily against it, but the first thing when Beth said throw it all at us was overload. So it might not mean, even though right now I understand the importance of it may be better than six months from now, I wouldn't be able to give it the time it needs. And we're really unique when we create plans. We compare VLCTs and 
write our own and do this and that and then have attorneys review them and it's a long process for us since I've been on the board. Mm -hmm. The recommendation I love, the actual drafting of it, I don't see pertinent at this exact time. Yeah, so just to give you background on that, so if you're going to have a debris management plan or a floodplain response plan or any of these other things, I'm very simply just seeing an issue, a system, systemic issue, something's missing. I, 10 minutes in Google, find something that really reads well because I can do that pretty quickly, change Johnson and send it. It's like, it's, it's not even an hour probably to the whole thing. But you're much farther ahead at that point with Carl's, okay, we're done with this, now we have to revisit this stuff, which ones do you want to pick up? It could take two years to get through the process you're talking about. But at least you have, and the sooner the better, because everybody has raw experience of how that plan should be amended or how it should work. But it's really just, it's, it is a placeholder on the shelf. I'm not intending to think anything about Johnson and how it would work, other than a lot of these are templates that have been tried and true from BLCT or from University Management or Richmond did a lot of work on theirs over multiple years because they have the same exact Bridge Street flooding almost that uh, Railroad Street has. So I think that's that's why I went to that spot. And they have a really uh, well thought out plan there too. So not saying that Johnson should do everything that way, but it's a good template that's ready to go. That's has a little bit of research done, but not 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 any number of hours. And just to clarify, that's what I meant by throw it at us. I don't mean to spend a lot of time on something. I just mean like throw the idea out there. Yeah, if there's anything that I would like to come out of this flood would be some place where, I mean, we had no, we knew this flood was coming. We had time, and we could have done some things differently, and that would be nice to be able to say, geez, the ice is backing up in the river. We're, we have a storm. Let's crack open these things to make sure that we're ready for what little, stupid little things we can do. Not necessarily debris management, but there are a lot of things that we can do. That, I mean, we could have, we sat in that meeting, we sat there that night, and I know my sister said, shouldn't you move the computers? And we all said, no, not Tom, Tom's going to be fine. Things like that. Yeah. And I think that goes to what Carl was saying about what phase we're in. You know, yeah. I think we're, we're maybe jumping the gun on some of those things a little bit. I'm, I'm totally in favor of everything that everybody said. It's just sequencing it. Yeah, right now we're in recovery. Yeah. All things I say, just so everybody knows, I'm never going to want to dig deep into the weeds because there's so much. When there's a lot, I just want to get things out there. I honestly just wish we had a room of whiteboard. Honestly, that's what would be my ideal right now, of whiteboard, oh, yeah. all walls whiteboard. Well, uh, one of the things is lessons learned, which be in the planning stage or future planning stage. Right, yeah. I sit here and grin as people are talking because I literally think like, okay, yeah, hindsight is easy to talk about moving computers, but yeah. I wouldn't have moved the computers, honestly. I would have called Casella, <laughs> right? Um, and I would have said, um, you know, later in the week, be ready for us. We want yeah, to be first to We want to be on the yeah. list. Uh, well, a lot of that was just based on the information we had. We didn't move computers because we didn't think the water was going to get that high. You right. know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, yeah. So. Uh, I guess specifically, this is uh, review FEMA cost recovery. I like breakouts like this. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're emailing something like this to Carl and you could just forward it to us before the meeting, I think it's super helpful. It keeps. We haven't been very on track tonight, but there's other nights we are. Um, I think we're adjourning now. And if they're super, super quick, copy, paste, don't even change the name, sure. That's fine. I get it. <coughs> it's a good, <coughs> as long as, like, you understood, it's kind of a placeholder on a shelf. Like, you, you put it really well, and uh, we're not going to get to it right now. No time. No time. Um, so on this collection of volunteer hours and invoices should be marked with the DR 4720. I assume that's true for all things. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. So does that mean that when we're, when we're, like when Carl's approving or when I just approved the facility bill, <coughs> just <coughs> writing that on it, where we sign? Well, well what Rosemary's doing with that separate fund, 
anything that's paid for that is going to be related to this yeah. to, to flood work. But that's different than writing it on an invoice. Well, the in, the um, the account number is on the invoice, and right, and the account number includes the the new special fund number. And that's sufficient. Uh, it could be explained, I would think, right? So yeah. So the, the when FEMA's looking through a pile of PDFs because they want everything digital anyway, right? They're going to see invoices, and if they're not clearly attributed to a site or a damage site, either by a site number or they just get hung up on it. So the, the more it says the 4720 and it's site number two, then they enter that as reimbursement. If they don't see anything, then they send it back saying, what site were you at? Yeah. Why is this state? So we need to state? order a DR 4720 it's, it's, it's more of a visual thing for people reading the document than it is, because it is backed up through the accounting system with Rosemary's coding. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's the I'll make a bunch of labels and stick them on it. Uh, perfect. Yeah. That would be awesome. Or we just sort of stamp, like, really. Could just get a stamp. But anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah labels, way. stamp, whatever. It's just labels are very expensive. Yeah. Like, Ron, is there anything on your bulleted list that you particularly want us to address tonight or anything that we one need thing that to I've, act on? Yeah, one thing that I'm needing to do, and I don't know if it's the meeting with you and Evan, maybe, or Nat. The documentation for the dumpsters and all that business is really weak for what I have right now. Nat was, gonna, Nat was gonna do a report. I think from the early days, Evan and Duncan were sort of on scene. Uh, somehow I have to start matching up, you know, 60 different loads that went up to Hyde Park Transfer Station to, even if we have to generalize to six locations in the village, those are not marked right now. I, when we looked at them, the load slips were only attributed to three or four mm -hmm. sites. You know, and I know there's more sites than that. So uh, they are by date. You know, so maybe people can sort of remember things. But every day that goes by, it gets harder to recreate right. those. Um, so anyway, I, don't, I think that's offline. But it, I think it's definitely it's the, the missing piece so far that I need to pull together somehow, which is, is a meeting. I don't think that's an email for you know phone call thing. That's just sitting down with whatever invoices Carl has, the load slips, doing that. So that's the only thing that I found so far that's needing a little more attention by whoever was involved with that the first couple weeks. So definitely you have the right three names called out, and I appreciate mine not being in that. <laughs> Although Beth is one of them. Um, but the other thing that just crossed my mind as you were talking is Mike from Casella. Anyway, Mike Casella. It's, it's, it's Mike Casella. at Casella. I think that's yeah. how he's in my phone. Anyway, yeah. um, he mentioned that if we needed additional documentation, that we could ask Casella for some of that documentation, including potential pictures, if we need pictures from their trucks. Okay. I don't know if he was saying that out of turn. Like of that day, of the big collection day? Of collection day and other load pickups also, from the sounds of it. And I think to your point, the longer we wait, the less likely we are to get some of that data that they have. Um, but that would probably be a good ask. Okay, I'll work on that a little bit. Get in touch yeah, with get, and get in touch with me, and if, if we could get, I don't know how directly involved. Were you actually calling for? I didn't was, didn't call any yeah. trash hauler. So Nat, Jason, and myself may be the biggest one. I did for pickup day. For right, pick just day for that one day. Right. That was all out to bid and approved the night before. Hopefully that's reasonably well documented by date, if nothing else. Yep. Um, the yeah, that should be pretty straight. Just my mind as we're talking about all of this is actually, I think we should ask Nat this too, but the four of us very specifically should go through our phone history and take screenshots of our phone history over time because I know, and just get them, we don't have to sift through them yet, but I know that we called places to try and get work. Um, so we just want to get those screenshots. The problem is I have an iPhone. Or take your phone bill, get your phone bill, get a copy of your phone bill. Yeah, you do, it's online, everybody has a phone bill. Well, you have a phone history, right? You have history on there, so. you, can, you can get it. Just... I'll work on it. 
ask him why. <laughs> That's good. Um, good. But we should really get those phone logs, and because they have all the, they have the council phone numbers. I started doing a, a report, and that's one of the things I was doing was looking at my texts and yeah, my good. phone logs. Okay. This is good. I think we should keep moving, but thank you for this. Anything else, Ron, that we didn't touch on? No, on Wednesday night, um, Carl looks like. I don't know if I need Wednesday, but Howard asked to to attend, but I'm not sure what role that would be. So I don't know. I can talk to you about it tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, I guess let it was talk by phone or in person if you're in town. Yeah, I'll be in tomorrow. Here and there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Two other, three other. Three, maybe four, three or four other um, flood items. Consider reassigning cleanup, repair, and cost of recovery to the lower storage building to the village. Um, the reason being because the village has the lower storage, storage building on their insurance. And somewhere along the way, we heard that you have to prove that your insurance doesn't cover damages. and for that reason, because the town doesn't have lower storage on our insurance, it seems reasonable that we would ask the village to take that solely. And they're amicable to that? Well, yes, they suggested it. The, the village had a meeting with the FEMA rep, and they were talking about the various properties. And when this was mentioned that the town was handling the lower storage building, he said it's going to be be complicated for FEMA in the town to sort out. It would just be easier if the village submitted the application. And Eric said, yes, that's fine. It's With everything else that they're doing, this is like nothing for them to handle that building. So so do you need a motion yeah. or I think just... Yes, because it was... a motion to rescind the earlier vote to have the town handle that and change that to... Uh, the village handling the FEMA reimbursement. Second. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. All right, excellent. Repairs to the office. Um, is that mine? Yep. Okay. So, uh, this is going to be a village thing, too. And I, I, I'm struggling in my own mind. To, with the with with Carl's you know four bullets on, on recovery, emergency, long term planning, etc. It seems to me that we need to come up with a decision on what to do and how to do it, in order to get the office back to functioning. To me, that's short term, and then we need to have a longer term discussion about what to do with the office. Talk has been moving it to the second floor. Um, there's been some mention of relocating the office somewhere else. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. That's a unique one where. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, so that's, and I, I, I'm not suggesting we need to come up with a decision on this tonight, but maybe this gets added to our discussion about, you know, flood and long-term planning, et cetera. This one, you know, because it's a municipal building and it's joint ownership, and there is demand because people keep going to the office. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure Rosemary would like to get a functional office. And the seniors would like their space back yeah. sooner than later. And I mean, but there's some short term decisions like do we simply slap some sheetrock back up, which we know is going to get damaged again, or is there another kind of material that we can put in that first two feet? Are there different floor treatments that we can do? Um, Have and, you heard from insurance? No. Because that's probably the first thing, isn't it? it? It probably is, and Ron, maybe you can cl help clarify this. It, is, is insurance typically going to pay what FEMA doesn't cover? Or are they going to give us a settlement for the value? It's the other way around. The insurance will be denied, or coverage will be denied, or partially paid. 
monthly your losses. The difference is where you resubmit to FEMA for the uncovered losses. So you have to get your uncovered losses first. Okay, so we need to you go need through. The we need to go through insurance first. Yeah. You already did, I think. You're just waiting. Well, we filed. We filed an initial, very, very. Yes. We just filed the claim. They're on. They are on notice that there was damage there, and I was told that Passive has a policy of up to five million dollars a year for all of its members' flood loss expenses. So, for the Johnson, Johnson Library, the Johnson fire station, the Johnson uh, municipal building, and you know whatever other towns that had damage it publicly owned insured and buildings. And then they there. have to go to reinsurance? And so they they have five millions to pay out and after that I don't know how they're going to divvy that up but what you don't get as Ron said then you would submit to FEMA. So reinsurance isn't like they have to meet a minimum for them to get reinsurance but reinsurance wouldn't impact us. Meaning they get covered when they hit their threshold for right. reinsurance, but it shouldn't impact what we get paid out or the customer. So reinsurance isn't it does, I, don't, I don't think it works that way. For passive, it doesn't work that way? No. So right. property but, insurance works. Yeah, well, my understanding was like, Carl, they, they have set, in their own internal insurance, they've set a cap of $5 million a year for all the towns. Yeah. Right, and that and they would they would pay out some of that out of their own reserves, yep. and then the balance would be reinsured re up to the five million. So if let's say that they, they had, five million. I get it, but the thing is that like there's two degrees of separation, right? There's the us being the customer passive in the middle, and the reinsurer above passive. So re the passive is like has to pay out to us. The reinsurer doesn't have to grant their reinsurance claim necessarily. They probably will. They're meeting a threshold. But we don't wait for a reinsurer. We wait for passive. Right. And is there, a, like, is there a timeline if they're waiting to see how many claims they get in? Like, how long do we have to wait? Well, we I may have to, it would seem to me we'd have to wait till the end of the year because there could be a fire in Middlebury and something in Burlington. No, this is that. flood for flood. Um, Five million for, for flood. a single flood event. For a single flood event. Now, three insurance I think that's probably 60 days. 60 days is your deadline to submit to okay. FEMA. Well, so that, would that include the flooding that happened in Rutland <laughs> under that $5 million just a couple of days ago? It's or group. same group? Whoever's in their group. Yeah. It's almost everybody. Yeah. Okay. Right. So at this point, we haven't had even a visit from an adjuster. Not at, it's not as far as I know at the municipal building. We have at the library. They came in, came to the library. Yeah. yeah. And those are filed at the same well, time. We've got lots of pictures, aren't they? Yeah, and everything's yeah. still there. So. And I filed one for the lower building too, which will probably need to be transferred. Is Serve Pro sent us a bill yet? I've not seen that, but yeah. <laughs> we'll hear you gasp. <laughs> so my, my question remains the same. Do we, do we rebuild? I think this is a great topic for next Monday's meeting. Yeah, yeah I think it has to be a joint meeting too, so right? Yeah. Can, Carl, can you follow up with Passive on when we're going to see adjusters for the rest of the buildings? Well, I guess we only have two now. Yeah, but it concerns me that they went to the library and not other buildings. Maybe they're just they're different adjusters. Because their form, their application, remember their application says to list out the addresses in that one application. We didn't have to have multiple, which makes it weird that we didn't have an adjuster go visit all properties. I had to submit individual claims for each building. So oh, you did? Uh -oh. They should have had, they should have had individual claims for and we've got okay. documentation of that that they were all submitted yeah, yeah. okay um yeah i hear you i need to get back to the office we need a joint meeting here soon well at like some point we'll have to have we have to know about the insurance before we can yeah right okay okay
Um, Sterling Market. Is that my mind code? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just really wondering. I know that either you or Evan were going to try and reach out to Pomelo and or Association Associated Grocers to see if there's any interest in doing something different there. I'm hearing rumors that they're going to rebuild right where they are. Anybody, anybody have any information? I do not. Last uh, Thursday, that was a long time ago, though. Last Thursday, when we were on that tour, we got sort of split into a couple different groups. But when we were in the Pomerleau building, the contractor there, who said he's had a very long working relationship with Pomerleau, said that the the grocery business, GA, I think I've heard it referred to. Associated Groceries. Um, they had a meeting the Wednesday before, and they decided to hold off on making a decision, and I believe it's tonight that they're meeting again to make a decision about whether they want to um, continue business there. And the contractor said that Pomelo said he would do whatever they want. So if the grocer wants to come back, he would prepare the building for them. And I guess where I'm going with that is should we should we try and do something more proactive in either thinking about a different location? I mean, if we don't, my opinion is if we don't have a grocery there, the town, the village is going to die. I, I just think that is such an anchor business for the village. And I think it's well worth us trying to make some sort of reach out um, to Pomelo and or community development, the ACCD, to see if there's potential funding available. I, I think we're going to really regret it if, if we just leave it totally up to um, Pomelo and Associated Grocers to make a business decision. There might be alternatives there that we could be involved in. I think we should consider the use of the Jewett property as a potential location for it as well. I think that's uh, the location that is in the village, although not quite as you know dead center. It is out of the floodplain, and we're already making moves towards building infrastructure out there. Um, so it's something I've been thinking about. I don't know if there's other locations, but. My opinion, I've heard the Jewett property said a lot, and I have serious concerns about that because not developed at all. We're having a long time uh, infrastructure wise. Like we're not I don't love that location, but I'm not opposed to it necessarily. I just don't love it. And I've heard other things like um, out down Railroad Street off River Road East, that area in the mill area, or I mean personally I telling everyone I can talk to about raising it up so that it is parking below and grocery above. I really love that idea. I think it would be great in many respects. Um, anyway, but I agree with you. I think it is, I feel the impact of not having the market there more than I thought I would feel the impact of it. And I think it is really central to our community. Should we <clears throat> see if somebody could reach out to him and invite him to one of our flood meetings. Or, or uh, I don't, do I don't have meetings. the number anymore in my phone. For her. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure we could get it. Um, I think. I think. What's our economic development person? Well, forward? that's. Uh, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? <clears throat> I mean, that's wow. exactly the kind of thing that, you know, someone like that could spearhead. Uh, but regardless, I think that, you know, that meeting that Carl was referring to last week, um, 
it had people that were really interested in making sure that we have community in our small town. And I really felt it from that group very specifically. And I'm not sure I felt it from some of the other groups so much. But this group, I felt it like genuinely the whole time we were touring. Um, they're connected people. I think we could probably use them in helping advocate and sourcing money and helping to establish all that it brings to our community. Um, Preservation Trust was very involved in the, in the 2011 um, machinations. You know, they were they were very effective. Yeah. That was Paul Brown. That was Paul Brown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's Ben Doyle now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's do it. Let's reach out. I'll reach out to Ben. You want to try to get in contact with the grocer. If Pamela is basically saying you will support whatever the the business wants to do, then let's I could I could reach out to Ernie and see if he knows a contact, but but at the same time, if people are comfortable with the idea, I I think it would be worth our effort to try and communicate with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development to see if there are any opportunities for the town to receive a grant to be an applicant for a grant, which could then be reloaned to Parmelo for redevelopment of the site. Now, I know that's a long way down the road, but are people even, do people even think we should go there? Um, yeah. Maybe that's too early to, you know, well, have that discussion. It's raised up a fee, Beth is in favor. Yeah. Well, and that's, if, if that's the way that we can go is, is saying, yeah, rebuild there, but put parking on the bottom and, you know, that's something I could be supportive of, but directing resources to rebuild in the floodplain, just, you know. <laughs> the only way that I could see it working would be if they moved the building up to the sidewalk, which, believe it or not, is quite a bit higher than yeah. where the building is now, um, in elevating it to a couple feet above the floodplain. Um, and if they did something like that, it, this was a concept that we came up with with years ago, having a second floor, which could be retail office space or some affordable housing or you know combinations thereof. Um, so really making it a multi-purpose building, which would really become an anchor building in the village, you know, in the downtown. It could, it could really go a long way to creating economic opportunity in, in the village. So that's a real, space. you know, that's a pipe dream. It's, you know, way down the road, but, um, and obviously Ernie owns the property. So, you know, if he's not interested in going in that direction, that's as far as it goes, but. Okay, let's start talking so that it doesn't, I get that we don't have the energy and resources right now to really push. However, if we lose the opportunity to have a conversation, then if they start making decisions, they're going to quickly be beyond the point of wanting to discuss it. Yeah. yeah. So let's do it. Okay. Everybody else is supportive of that? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Um, consider accepting, um, sorry, Jean. Um, accepting resignation and appointing resignation, uh, appointing. Uh, uh, Motion to accept Sabrina, Sabrina Rossi's resignation from the Library Board of Trustees. Did we already do that? I thought we did it too. Uh, I'll second, that we can also send um, a letter. Sure. Friendly. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it and appointment. Motion to adopt the motion of appointing Kelly Van Dorn to the library. Board of Trustees. And that's the trustees' recommendation? Yes. Go. Yeah, she was on the board. In the Second. Board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, approving, uh, consider approving joint purchase by car, wide format printer, scanner, copier. 
Now we're getting into the fun stuff. I think you're all set, Gene. Yeah. Go get some sleep. Gene's excited about this wide format printer. I'm Don't pretty excited. I am actually that. excited about this printer. So. Do you see this? It's got like pictures. And <laughs> there's some crazy it's stuff. Exciting, huh? It's not a color. Do we know, right? think that obtaining quotes for two different machines from one vendor meets the the um, <clears throat> passes the straight face test as far as our purchasing policy goes? My face is here. Also talks about if there are <clears throat> not other means by which we can. Is this a purchase? It's under five thousand. A lease. Over, over a looking at an outright purchase. You're looking at it as a purchase versus a it's lease. Over yeah, it's a combined purchase a between us and yeah, so I think it's yeah, recommended to get a combined lease, which works. I have to review so, that. Is there a reason we don't want to do a lease? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. How I about. believe the thinking is that it's going it to be less expensive in the long run to, to purchase outright. Is that what Hyde Park well, is thinking to? What's yeah, involved the, in the lease? What's that? What's involved in the lease? Because my company leases one and includes all toner, all paper, so it's $1,500. But if you don't have to buy anything, replace anything, service anything when it breaks, there's, well, when it goes usually, offline, you don't have to do anything. There's usually two different contracts. One's the lease and one's maintenance. So in this proposal, I forgot what the maintenance cost was, but that would get you what you're talking about, which is the maintenance end of the, it's a monthly $200, I think, something like that. The purchase it was at a high interest rate through the lease, you know, when you equate what the actual interest charge is under their lease, it was pretty high, so that's where we came off the pay, pay, pay now, save the $1,000 of interest because it's only $2,000 when you split it between the two towns. And you're still getting the maintenance, the service, the paper, the toner, that's, that's an as extra, part of the maintenance Yeah, that's, package. The, that's the extra package if you gotcha. per month, yeah. So, the so for any payment per month that would be Justin checked in again this evening between 5 and 5.30 or so, I guess, um, and gave me more information. So earlier in the afternoon, he sent me what he called the proposal. At that time, he had price just from one vendor, which is Usherwood, which is what you have in your packet for um, the machine that as being discussed as the preferred machine of, of the two that they had prices for. And it was the least expensive of the two that he had a price for. On that proposal that came earlier this afternoon, he showed two other vendors that he was waiting on to give him a cost proposal. Then very late, he sent in one of them. So it's from the company down in Barry office, office systems, I believe it is, and but their price is for the same machine that you already had a price from from Usherwood. The cost of it is more um, than from Usherwood, but the monthly or the um, maintenance fee after the one-year warranty looks like it might be less than what Usherwood was paying. So. I don't know if, that, if you want to consider like a life cycle cost for owning this thing, or if you just want to go by the purchase price. But he was expecting one more vendor. And Ron, let me know that it might not be something that's urgent that you have to deal with tonight. Perhaps, or maybe if the price comes through tomorrow, Hyde Pipe could make a decision tomorrow night. Otherwise, you might be waiting to your meeting on the third Monday and Hyde Park's meeting on the fourth Tuesday. Seems like fourth, Tuesday. <laughs> fourth Tuesday. Fourth Tuesday. Yeah. After, after <laughs> your schedule, I think that's. Rosemary, yeah. have you had okay. a chance to review the specs on it, and do you think it'll do, you will do what, what you want it to do? Mm -hmm. And it's Hyde Park's an agreement. You prefer the. This one that yes, yeah, my understanding is Justin's been working with both clerks, and they're all on the same page with the model. Okay, and the maintenance package is comparable in terms of what's included in the maintenance package. I don't know that yet. Just how, where is this going to live? In Johnson, in our office. Same part. 
You know, like where? <laughs> Will's probably wondering the same thing. Do you know where all the old yeah. desks Space were upstairs? We come in and yeah, get you some bench, right? Do you know where all the weights were right there, Duncan? Uh -huh. Some look so great. Right there. There are ways that you can set that up pretty easily, but. Yeah. Oh, yes. So Hyde Park could email directly over the. To have something printed off. Yeah. And, yeah. Justin's bouncing back and forth. Or, yeah. Under the local, anyway. There's software that gets loaded onto these printers as well where you can do things remotely. So. Yeah. Do we want to make a decision tonight or do we want more information on additional? I, I would like more information on the third bid. I'd like to just make a decision and trust that. I would too. I'd make a motion that we um, even purchase the unit from Usherwood. Yeah, I think we should think long term. Life cycle. Is Usherwood the better deal life cycle over the life of, or is very? Well, we don't know because the con cause the service agreement hasn't been compared yet. Yeah, that's so then let's empower. Uh, let, let's say our wishes are the my wishes <laughs> are the, the, the least the least expensive over life cycle. Let them figure out the details. If you guys want you to, have to know, that with your motion. You're the second. He's your first. You have to now. <laughs> you're, so you're, you're I, proposed I'm thinking, like I, my proposal is is that we empower Carl <coughs> to to um, sign an agreement for per joint purchase at, at the least costly over the full life cycle of the printer versus the, the least costly today. You know where I'm getting I, I, yeah, I, I'm just, years. I'm just trying to anticipate what the Hyde Park point might be because they're, they're the other 50% of the, yeah. do, they do you think there's any preference there, Ron? With the Hyde no, Park? Whatever you, I think if you make a decision tonight, they'll have that tomorrow night to probably match it. All right. So if I understand your suggestion, my motion would be to authorize Carl and a representative from Hyde Park to make a purchase of the least cost life, over life cycle over life cycle of this model TA twenty. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? And you're seconding that one, Mark? Yes. I'm so confused. Any discussion? So we just think buy it ourselves. Any discussion? That was an honest question. No. I mean, we budgeted for it. Aren't you the one who's all worried about every cent all the time? I am. But joint equipment in two different municipalities. Let's see how it goes. Worst, worst that happens, we sell our 50% and buy our own next year, right? Well, it is, it's gonna be housed in the Johnson office. That's the, the plan at least. If so. Hyde Park was smart, they'd make, it, they'd make sure it was upstairs. <laughs> Our office is just smart, right? We're smart, we'll make sure it's upstairs. Yeah, it looks it, like it's off the ground. Well, how about, how about this? If Hyde Park bought half of this last month, and it flooded, who would be on the hook? I guess our insurance would be, but yeah. they probably wouldn't be too happy. Just a thought. Okay. One year warranty. So, uh, are we ready to vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Me. Did, did you really vote no? I said, I said me. No, everyone voted aye, Donna. He says me okay. sometimes. I really keep you on your toes sometimes, don't I? Yeah, thanks for that. I'm like a ninja. The concept of accepting the town of St. George to an interlocking agreement for assessing. Ron, well, these are all Hyde Park for topics. <laughs> Perfect night to go. Yeah, almost like that was planned. <laughs> okay, discussion. So we everybody saw the proposal for... Hyde Park's okay with amending the interlocal agreement. This is this is a town of Johnson employee, so I guess we would have to be okay with it. It is a town of Johnson employee, and I talked with Rosemary about the um, about the uh, extra time for billing a second town. And I think I think the thought process was: is it twenty five bucks now? A week. Twenty five a week. Yeah. 
So would we, would we, would your thought process be we would add in them at 25 bucks a week extra? Mm -hmm. Just for administration fees? For the, ad, for the admin fees, because yeah. Rosemary is the one that actually bills out the hours to gotcha. the towns. What does that get us, like 10 minutes of your time, Rosemary? Is the contract, like, written in a way that we have to rewrite it to accommodate this? Yes. It's We'd have to yes. add. We'd have to add St. George. So I think Carl's proposal was to approve it in concept, yes. bring back a a formal redrafted copy for as a signature copy. Yeah. Con okay. Conceptually approved. Yeah, I agree. Y'all. Yes. Yeah, as long as Rosemary yeah. isn't yeah too bothered by the extra work, that's fine. Cool. That was really quick. Consider approving outdoor cultivation tier two cannabis license. Thanks for being patient. No, there's nothing in your practice. Filled because out we're not online. To disclose the location. What? Oh, we're not supposed to disclose the location. Um. Um. Do you have this one? Well, so we received um, a notice from the state that the Vermont Cannabis Control Board has approved an outdoor cultivator tier two license for a company that is known as New Ink. I'm sorry, is. Um, registered as New England Cannabis Partners, and, but they're doing business as Moth a Plant Alternatives. I think it's Mother Plant. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Mother, Mother Plant. Mother. It's a millennial uh, thing. All right. Anyways. Come on, girls, say it. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> um, so um, it's sent to you for your approval. This is a, a new license, and the information provided is that their security is meeting all of the Vermont Cannabis Control Board's requirements. It, hey, and you have guests here tonight for this. How long does this license last for? Well, it's a one, they're one-year licenses, I believe. That's a one-year license. Seems like an odd time to get an outdoor grow license in August, but it's been growing. Oh, it's been growing. Oh yeah, it's just, this has been like months in the process to get it to you guys. Okay. It's been approved by the CCB in like June. Okay. Yeah, there's quite a bit of backlog from what I gather too. I will make a motion to approve VCCB uh, application uh, S. Zero 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 three nine nine seven um, from New England Cannabis Partners for out, their outdoor cultivation license. Move motion to a second. Second. Any discussion? discussion? We're in that number again. Five, Five zeros. zeros. <laughs> Are we in a, a discussion? Yep. Yeah. So. Not that this is particularly appropriate to the particulars of this application, but I'm not entirely clear what our role as a board is on these. Is it every is it, town? Every town needs like its own cannabis control yeah, board. Yeah, we do. We are. Yeah, yeah, we are a control board. Yeah, Thanks. We know that. I understand that. Our, so but we what? Use, what? What can we do? We have very little ability to do anything. Uh, the only thing that, from my reading statute a million times and getting phone calls every once in a while and reading it again, is that we don't actually have any control over anything. We're just a cog in the process. Uh, if we had zoning, then we could have law, rule, whatever rules around regulating pieces of cannabis uh, organization 
businesses. Right, that would but be because location. Like it couldn't be located more than 500 feet from a daycare center. We could also have, like well, that. we could also have like impose fees and taxes and things like that, but it can't be specific to, no, no rule can be specific to cannabis. Um, so we don't really have much authority at all. That's kind of what any, I, I would argue we don't yeah. actually have any. Yeah. I guess I, I share the same feelings. We're not allowed to deny it. We're not really allowed to ask for anything. Um, this is like a feel good for the state. I mean, we they could sold just all the money and we could just be bureaucratic and sit on things and not let them move forward. But what could we that? have uh, our our uh, constituents passed a vote saying that we should have this? So. Well, and specifically, that was for retail cannabis. Um, the cultivation is not relevant to the, the vote that was taken at town meeting day. Town, the town meeting well, day we, vote was to opt in for uh, retail cannabis. We did actually have a vote that was about the control board very specifically that was to all voters. I understand your point about retail, but it wasn't just about retail. It was about a control board. Whether to establish a control board. Yeah. yeah. I guess my, my point was that there was other than through the control board, there's no ability for us to say no to a cultivator. You can't. And we are control the control board. board, so and we don't have any authority because we don't have something. And even if we said no yeah. to this, it would still be my people want to have I was gonna say you can't really be bureaucratic and sit on it because you can grow cannabis without the cannabis control board's consent. Yeah. 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 You just can't yeah. sell it. Yeah. It's just part of the state. Is process. that even a requirement? I believe that what you have applied for and what the CCB granted is the ability for you to sell your cannabis into the legal market. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we, there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there would be limits on the number of plants that they could grow without this. But yeah, the CCB already gave me approval. I had honestly no idea about this until they sent me a, <laughs> until I got the email from you. They didn't even let me know that I had to do this. They said, oh, you're good, you got your approval, here's your number, here's your cultivation number, you're good to go. And a couple days ago, oh, I gotta go to the town meeting. Kind of like, no big deal, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't even like know about it. <laughs> well, here we are. I don't think it's efficient as state government. Uh, did we just vote and approval already? Or we did not, not vote I think yet. we have a motion and a second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Nice habit, congratulations. You're through the tape. Sorry to put you through all that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being patient. It's like just a formality, right? Names for the minutes? I'm Dylan. D Y L A N. What's your last name? Yeah, D. Yeah. 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 Yeah
to serve as a steering committee, or if you don't want to call them steering committee, just authorized representatives to help with matters in between select board meetings, minor decisions. Mark's very that's passionate that's about minor up. bridges. I like covered bridges and I like minor decisions. <laughs> well, it could be Mark and Carl. Well, Mark and the town administrator. Mark and the town administrator. I like it. I like it. Can it really be like a steering committee? I mean, they're not going to find anything that's not in the report from 2010. Okay, okay, let's let's do do steering, steering committee of the sculpting study? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, sounds great. Of the Scrutiny Bridge. This is, is the second sculpting. This is the sculpting study, sculpting study. Oh my God. Are you good with that, Carl? Yep. Do we need Did somebody make a motion? Nope. I make a motion oh. to appoint yeah. Mark and Carl as the. No, no, the town administrator. Okay, yeah, Mark the and the town administrator. Whoever that person may be. Yep, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's how it. Congratulations, Carl. And Mark. And Mark. And thank you both. Um, consider approving the fiscal year 24 municipal road general permit grant in aid stormwater. Oh my god. <laughs> I love the way this one starts. It's my favorite. Again, no one expected this item. <laughs> is there a specific location or is this sort of just general? No, this is just a general um, grant and aid for work that they might do on uh, any of those hydrologically connected segments. So, so our choice. Which yep. So if they've got a, a road work plan if they're going to work on certain roads, then that would be the logical thing was to look at those segments on those roads where they're doing other paving or gravel road projects and um, document that work on those roads. And then if they have to go to other roads and just go out and do special stormwater mitigation work. Do you need a motion to approve? You, you have a grant agreement, so yeah, we're looking for a motion to, to approve motion and authorize signature sign. of the grant agreement. <coughs> so moved. Second? And so seconded. Okay, cool. I need Are you clear on that, Donna? It, uh, so your motion is to authorize the town administrator to sign. Yeah, if there's any questions as to specific wording, Donna, it is item number 18 here. She, she already okay. nodded, yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh huh. I must have it. Um, I mean, should I say my funny joke about Scrivener Bridge? No. You should. <laughs> is it a flooding <laughs> joke? Those have been really popular lately. <laughs> no. <laughs> So why I was just saying the flood mitigation, we should just do the work all around screaming. <laughs> which yeah. is totally fine, but everything right. around it was not. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, you missed that, Carl. During the flood event, literally the only place that didn't flood was Scribner Bridge. The road beside it washed out twice, not just once, twice, and then it flooded all around it. There was a moat, but the bridge was fine. Jeez, you, got, you got to talk about these things more often, then you wouldn't have any flooding damage. That's true. It's very exciting. Uh, all right. Well, the bridge has survived quite a few flood events. Yeah, that bridge. The bridge is fine. It's the rest of it. Okay. So updates on Northern Borders Regional Commission and the Economic Development Administration grants. First is Northern Borders. I got a call in the in the midst. Week two of flood events, I got a call from the state um, northern borders administrator and asking basically if we were ready and prepared to move forward with northern borders if we were to get it because we scored very highly. Mm -hmm. um, but they were worried with the flood event that that might deter or inhibit our ability to proceed. So they just wanted to have an understanding based on where we were. And I told her that I was happy to report that that parcel of land is just fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we were prepared to continue moving forward. Um, so if anything, that, was, that increases our urgency to do something there, you know? Yeah, so it was a good 
a good news story, and wow. she said that we may hear somebody from the federal grant administration, although I did not, um, because there could have been possible follow-up questions. Doesn't seem like there were from anyone. Uh, so that's good. They're still in the same timeline as before. Um, they're looking to award in August. This month, right? And then with, sorry, awarding in October, and then we'd have to commit to spending in a fiscal year essentially. Um, not fiscal year, in a calendar year from the time of that award in October. Um, you're, so. You're about to knock your phone off. <clears throat> um, the other update is for the EDA grant application. We did not yet submit that application. We did submit a letter of intent. The deadline for the grant applications were pushed out, um, we believe, to the end of this month. Did we ever get confirmation on that? I have not heard anything more on that. I haven't either. But anyway, Tori is at LCPC is helping with that. Oh, and Sal isn't here anymore. Sal moved away, apparently. Yeah, I don't know. Go on. Where did he go to? Back to California. California. He wants to burn instead of drive. <laughs> That's very nice. That's half well thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, but anyway, we're still, the EDA grant application is still on the register on for a future date. And they're changing the category oh. of that application. And the new category um, the grant would provide was it 60% or 80%? Higher, it was higher. So if it, we were only dealing with EDA for this project, this new grant category would provide 80% of the total project cost instead of 50%. Mm -hmm. And they were still, and Tori, I think Tori was still working through how we could overlay the EDA with Northern Borders because that wasn't clear. It was complicated. It was not okay. Cool. Okay. Anyway, yeah. That's exciting. Has anybody heard any scuttlebutt about the rail trail? What's uh, is that just about what the they're, rail trail? They're I, supposed I to be in the middle. I went to Dog's Head the other day. It's basically yeah. the yeah. rail trail. It's gone. Kind of walking, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really. Did you um, e-bike? No. <laughs> there's, there's. He couldn't even get there. Something I've heard is that they're going to be making an announcement soon um, about areas that can possibly be reopened and et cetera, et cetera. I don't think they've done the full assessment that they need to on every do you, inch of the trail. Do you want specific answers? No, I just no, wondered if people have heard any scuttle about, about what's going on. You could reach out to Jackie Casino. Yeah, yeah we could just ask. Okay. We did hear uh, Evan and FEMA and the B-Trans disaster guy, uh, Dick Hosking, were on that initial drive around. And their initial assessment was two to three years before, before they get back to where they were a couple weeks ago. But is that like human years or dog years? <laughs> dog said years. Dog said years. <laughs> that's a FEMA. See, that's a good yeah. one. That's a federal. Yeah. It's a federal years. Federal years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll get it. Don't worry. Well, and, you know, you think about all the money that went into that and federal money as well. It is going to be quite a lift to get it back to where it was, but. I think the value of it was very clearly demonstrated in the, what, eight weeks that it was fully open and available. Um, it's just going to be a matter of making it happen quick enough. So we did hear early on that Dog's Head was <coughs> going to be one of the like, top two or three most difficult places to re-establish where that cliff is. Oh, um, yeah. Um, but it's also a really easy... Get out there detour road. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, yeah, and just in the past, V Trans has been very reluctant to detour on town highways. But I don't know if we should. Is there overlapping right of ways there? There's got to be. Yeah. If not, it's really close. Well, they're in, yeah, about five feet. About five foot overlap. Five there. Feet. Anyways. Anyway. I okay. Don't, I don't dare um, last ag agenda item before executive session. So, space, um, community, select board, etc. cetera. Uh, we're lucky that the college is allowing us to use space, but 
Um, I don't believe we're using space for free. Um, we've been quoted pricing. And it's not just us, right? We have a number of, we have all of the community we talked about before. We have us, we have the village, I think, is still meeting in the upstairs. Um, which, well, the village is still meeting in the upstairs. Um, Planning Commission is going to be using Jenna's Promise for their Thursday meeting. <coughs> um, <coughs> Historical Society, I believe, is where the staying put. The library is going to be at the Sonic Temple. But we, I think we do have to think about all of the different committees and ourselves and community that we support and figure out ideas for how to proceed in a short way. <coughs> So what would you like to see for meeting space, like seating, or how many board members? I'll say that encompasses committees and commissions and so on. So. I think the biggest crowds we get, like today, we almost ran out of seats. We had just enough seats, and we do see more people than this at select board meetings on occasion. At some. It becomes a select board meeting, and now that we're, I think now that we're in recovery, we're going. I think it is likely we're going to see more people because yeah. people are going to be upset about things. I was, are you referring to this space, Beth? Um, when I said what? Uh, today, you mentioned today we were. Today I was around, We yeah yeah. Our seats were taken when we had everybody who was here in this room together. There was one seat left. And it was next to Duncan for anybody that can't see that. <laughs> I'm blind on this side. <laughs> uh, but I think it's like, I just think it's important that we figure out a longer term plan because we're not going to be in the office quickly. We're not, the reality is we're not going to be in the office quickly. It is still closed. I personally am not super comfortable with having a public meeting there. Um, I, I think the rec department or the rec committee and the skate park committee draw decent crowds a lot of times. <coughs> and especially with the skate park being closed, probably when they start having meetings about reopening, they're going to have a lot of participants. Yeah. So just to be clear, on the insurance decision, FEMA decision, FEMA's advice really is, you know, multiple times when we reached out to them, to carry on with your plans, with the caveat documentation, photos, what are you doing, what's the decision making done, contracts, bid, all that stuff. So you don't necessarily have to wait for what might be another 30 days for the insurance. Yeah. You just don't know how the money is going to get back to you, whether it's going to be 100% insurance or more on FEMA. So I think you have a... Are you, you talking about that, renting space specifically? I'm not about no, anything I'm you're doing. I'm talking about putting a municipal building back together. Right. Uh, 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 specifically uh, uh, about any work that you're considering, whether you want to use resilient materials at the municipal building, whether you want to leave it downstairs as an open space so it's easier to recover, yeah. uh, put more investment upstairs, have Rosemary hire an office consultant to figure out that space. You know, those are things that you can start to do now that you don't wait another two weeks to be back here wondering how to get started. So just want to be clear that you don't blame it on insurance taking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I wasn't planning on that. I was just figuring, like, in terms of space, I'm just worried about meeting space. And it's like, I'm thinking temporary, like, to the point of recovery. Temporary, where are we going to meet while we're waiting things, for things to happen? And where are our community groups going to meet while we wait? Yeah, that's an upstairs, well, downstairs question for your yeah. office, I think, if you're going to stay upstairs or move down. What about the elementary school? Can we get space there? Um, we can ask. I was also going to ask about McClellan. Um, and it might be, I know it was mentioned earlier that, you know, the, the seniors would like to have their space available again. Um, maybe that is a space. Um, to rent to me? Yeah. Um, if we're already renting from the college here, then, you know, maybe they're, they'd be willing to look at a different building and how large is that old town hall building? 
Yeah. Well, it's more of an auditorium. There's not a lot of this kind of sit around the table space. You have to sit on the stage. It's like the theater. I was in the opera once. But we, um, I mean, we can bring tables in, sit out there. Could. Yeah, that, that's an option. Do, isn't there access <coughs> to that as part of the sale from the town to the studio <coughs> center? I'm sure. Pretty sure. Um. So. You guys aren't very helpful here. Do we want? I mean, do we want a rent space? Well, I'm supportive of a rent space. Yeah. First floor to get it for meeting space only. I don't know the answer to that. Well, one, one we have to move furniture. That is clear. Yeah. One thing we'd have to do, right, is put out some sort of an RFP for contracted services. Yeah, I mean, do that right away as far as getting the walls on, electrical check, whatever the things are to get that space, even if it's just minimal sort of work in the sense you're not going to have offices down there right away, that would be one decision. But if you want to put offices down there, I can see it take a lot longer to figure out that building. But Rosemary, what do you think? Do you think that that would be a suitable way to, to try to get us into the first, into the building at least? Mm -hmm. Do basic, do basic do renovations? Basic? We need, if we're going to stay upstairs, we need more organization because mm -hmm. everything's just everywhere. And you got all the seniors want to get in there soon. Well, you make the downstairs suitable for them to use downstairs? Right. Just by putting the walls and some kind of flooring down? Maybe I'm <laughs> crazy, but the discussion on if you guys move upstairs is a longer term one. Yes. Uh, in the short term, what I see is RFC for replacing the insulation and sheetrock that was removed. We could have a discussion about carpet or floor tile. What about electric? It's pretty minimal. I don't was any of it wet. They turned it back on. Well, we have downstairs two, two outlets that are in the floor, so. Okay, so that we could be part of the RFP. That's. Uh, Jordan guy, I can't think of his name. So that's minimal, but get that repaired, leaving the layout exactly how it is, and then the people in the office move back into their original offices, and then we start a long-term conversation. Maybe I'm wrong about we that. We don't even—I don't know if we have to move people back into the offices yeah. necessarily. Like we could, but I don't know if we have to. Well. I think what Ray Rosemary I think, I think the saying. decision on staying upstairs is probably solely Rosemary's, but the trustees and the select board should talk about that, I think. Well, there'd be a big cost yeah. associated The with cost is one thing, and the other thing is, even if the decision was to move upstairs, to pour a vault on top of the vault that's there and build the walls, they're not going to want to be in there anyways. They're not going to be able to be in there. They, they can't be in there. All the construction is so they're moving downstairs either way in my mind correct me if i'm wrong here the thing is that like for me that's just too many steps ahead that's what i'm saying if we do an rfp and get up the sheetrock and insulation repaired they move downstairs and we resume business as usual our meeting space will be upstairs for the very short interim period i'm fine with yeah. paying rent to the college for meetings and maybe we need to find a room with more seats. So, Rosemary, does that sound like an appropriate, like if we go just push the RFP out, can you support that? And can you bring that to the trustees too, just so that they're not covered on insurance? We have the insurance on this. Well, that's a jointly owned building. If there's expense involved, there, they need to be involved. That's but, one large question that I have yeah. as a whole is, so it's FEMA reimbursement. Well, it's insurance first. Insurance first, if they deny, it's FEMA reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So does the town pay for everything? 
get reimbursed what it can, and then ask the village for 50% of the remainder? Or does the town and village pay for 50%? No, it's too And much. then the reimbursement, the town writes a check to the village for the 50%, and everybody's already got their split. I don't know what the proper way of doing that is. How do we're they the usually one, do it? We're the ones who have the building insured. Like, we're ready to be definitely yeah. to get that. But the small was princess that we've had for the building so far. I have and then you do a do to do from from the village for the expenses for the shared expense mm -hmm. wait so what did you just ask typically it's 50 percent town village since this is going to be insurance reimbursement so from an accounting standpoint she would do a so far, do to do from the town who's the town the one's going to get the reimbursement but what's left and over? And you're not doing any of the from the village. Not yet. How do we know what's left over after reimbursement? We don't know what we're going to get yet. Right. That's true. That's why my question was, do we go in 50-50 at the beginning and split the reimbursement? It doesn't matter because everything? all of the costs are going associated with flood, so we should be able to see building flood. Mm -hmm. So it, won't, it doesn't matter. Right. I guess... Ultimately, make, the village is going to pay To be right... No, no, no. Uh, it's not even that... I, I guess from my standpoint, if we're forced to have that 50-50 cost at the beginning, we're having the conversations with the village at the beginning, and I want to make sure that there's not a forget of those conversations, that's all. If we can talk to the village about them being comfortable with this plan, sure. Move out. The town will pay for it, get all the reimbursement. The village will pay for 50% of what's not covered. That would be fair. I just want to make sure they're not left out of conversations. Yeah, no, I think they I think they need to be part of the conversation. Maybe as part of that, they could get the same report we get for all the flood costs, and they could see specifically the building costs mm -hmm. out of that report. So they're getting it regularly. But for you know, for example, to use Evan's example, it doesn't make sense to me to put sheetrock back in. I would rather see if there's some flood resilient. Material that we get could get for that first two feet. I don't know what it is. You can do MR board or something, but <coughs> is that like sheetrock? Moisture resistant sheetrock. Well, the problem is when the water gets behind it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't, that's exactly because right. the water's going to get behind it anyway. I've researched this. In 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 terms of the insulation, you get the same issue. If you put a bad insulation back, it's get, it gets wet. I don't know that. Would would sprayed foam need to be replaced? I'd rec I'd recommend a rock bowl, but that's just me. Spray foam, you can't get the moisture out of the wood that soaks in. My thought. I put rock bowl in. But I guess that's a longer conversation with the. It's a good point. Like specifically, the guy with Surf Pro told me, and I quote, "Carpets are really stupid idea when you're going to flood." So I don't know if I'd really support putting carpet back in. Um, I, do vinyl floors. I think there's probably a better, a better, a more flood resistant flooring that we could put in. And we could, we could certainly put throw rugs, you know, or pieces of carpet sections that people could yeah. walk on and, you know, but those could be disposed of. But. So let's push out <clears throat> RFPs. Yeah. If we're talking about RFPs, is Carl going to handle those or Ron? So do we work with the library on getting an RFP out for them as well? That's I the am other building doing that now with Crystal from the trustees. The library is getting an RFP before the municipal building? Not bad. What about Hopefully office is clear. furniture? We should only get plastic office furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Foam, so it floats. Do you Six inch need wheels. somebody to help with organization <laughs> upstairs first? How long are we going to be up there? Are we going to be up there? It's going to depend on how we get responses to our RFPs and how quick people can get in. I know personally, I would, I would like some filing cabinets up there. They're just laid it on the desk. Yeah. Is anything downstairs salvageable? or? We threw away all the two drawer filing cabinets. All we have left is the big. Yeah, the water is about two drawers. I mean, how, how expensive are we talking? A hundred bucks a filing cabinet? If you go to surplus, where, where most of ours came from. To begin with. What about the uh, the um, fireproof s 
uh, filing cabinets that were down there, are those ruined, do you think? Or? I think Justin took out whatever was on the bottom. They didn't burn. Four on the bottom. So if they were dried out, they'd probably be okay? So I, I would like clarity on this RFP. Is this an RFP to, to sheetrock and rock wool? <coughs> I don't know. What, what do we do? What do That's we, the confusing well, part, because I'd like to have the conversation with the village. I guess where I sit, moisture resistant sheetrock, uh, repaint, baseboard, rock wall insulation, have the electrical tile, two outlets inspected. Either tile or the little tape down carpet squares that are quick and cheap to throw no, vinyl. away. Vinyl. Vinyl. Yeah. Sure. The vinyl plank. Mm -hmm. You get pretty looking vinyl. That like just like sounds Jackson, cheap Jackson and clicky. I have, and, like, vinyl, can't deal I have with vinyl plank it. in my bathroom and I love it. Yeah. Like I want to do my can't deal with it. I love it. <laughs> Whatever. I'm putting it in my apartments. Yeah. Peel and stick. So for downstairs, if you want to use it for meeting room space or maybe for the seniors, do you need to resheet rock that bottom two feet, or could we? Let's just say for meeting space, could we, a uh, couple of us, go downstairs and look at all the stuff that's sitting there on desk and whatever and say, okay, if we move everything towards the vault while keeping an access to the vault door, how much space would there be left for an open meeting area up towards the front windows and counter? And then you know, for meetings, all you really need are the the tables and chairs and access for the internet, right? And you know, does it matter if the floor looks numbers. like it's concrete? Yeah. Well, and in another couple of months, it's going to start getting cold, and the lack of insulation and sheetrock, you can see through the walls in some yeah, places. Yeah, I guess down there. to me, so the but to get started, seniors. that's what would be needed, right? Just get some table and chairs in there, and and then I guess the seniors use. They might have a different need with flooring. I, I'm not sure what they do, so I, I, I just see stuff upstairs. Yeah, Our stuff to suck it up that, for a while. Yeah. I don't see the point in moving everything there. If we can get a return from the RFD and get the project going. Just do it. it like, am I making sense? I, if it's going to be three months, sure, we can have a couple of meetings there. But if we can get an RFP out, anyway. yeah, I know yeah. the the climate for that's an interesting one. How soon could you get the work done, though? Even if we proceed immediately to get uh, <laughs> bidding specifications done and released, I hear Mark Woodward's really good at sheetrock. Uh, I'm going to uh, make a motion for Carl to submit an RFP and work with Evan on the details of uh, such RFP. I second that. <laughs> Any discussion? I don't even know what the RFP is for. So sure. Yeah, I wonder if you want a little more detail. Okay. Question, no, an, RFP an RFP to, a second, thank you. The RF, uh, a motion to send an RFP out to do the basics of the first floor, such as insulation, and some sort of wall covering for the torn out um, areas um, and make sure that our um, electrical is good. And what else, Rosemary? Floor covering. Floor, floor covering. And some sort of a floor covering slash vinyl plank. <laughs> there may, there may be plank. better, <laughs> that's, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking there may be alternatives to, you know, maybe there's maybe there's a vinyl floor. No, 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 I don't care. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Don't write the vinyl plank part. But anyway, yeah, some no. sort of a flooring um, for basic usage. That's my motion. Is that a friendly amendment, Mark? I think it's great. I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow. You guys can paint it. Paint the floor. I like that. Okay, any other discussion? No, not painting the floor. The only other thing I would suggest as a possible is I don't know what Carl's capacity is. Could your motion include Carl and Ron working together on that if, if that were suitable or amenable? Sure. 
I agree. <laughs> somebody, somebody do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. That sounds good. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have polls? Sure. Sure, I'll polls. Okay. Now, the, all. I, I'm assuming that this RF, well, we haven't got, gotten there, but I, I'm assuming that the RFP would need to be reviewed and approved by both boards before we actually yeah, did something. Yeah. I like that, yep. I love it. And Rosemary. Because, you know, at some point, Rosemary's going to need to get back in the vault. You know, I mean, there are going to be people that Does that are work? Going to want access to the land records, right? If somebody wants to come in and look at the vault, records, Susan's been going down with them. Going and down with them, so you haven't tried locking or unlocking it? The last time I tried to, I couldn't move the dial. Oh, really? That's got to be part of the RFP. Should we claim that and that? We should so, Thanks, Ron. Have a good one. I think the dial moved. I don't think the handle moved. That's okay. That thing never moved. Maybe we need to make sure the adjusters when they come. Know yeah, that. make sure but, they know that. Yeah. Because it's also a real Maybe issue. Have, some of the moisture's gone out of the building. Yeah, yeah it might maybe. work. WD yeah. 40. Does it still smell fresh and clean in there? But it's also a real issue to let, I mean, Susan almost has to be there, correct me if I'm wrong, but believe it or not, people go in and steal records um, because they're old. Um, the people are old or the records are old? No, the records are old. <laughs> and they're, you know, some of those, some old, of those old records are really valuable. I mean, mm -hmm. on the antique market, they, they bring a lot of money. So somebody... One advantage of having the office down there is at least the office staff has some control over the people that are in the vault. Yeah, I hear you. I just want to make sure, like, the vault door thing, like, we should not put effort into trying to fix it if before an adjuster comes. Like, we need to make sure that, because that could be really expensive, I would think. <clears throat> I don't know. Real I scary. couldn't even get the stupid thing open, so I don't know. What is it now, Rosemary? It's a dial. Oh, you actually. It's a right dial that yeah. needs to be perfect. Get, we tried get, like, opening that the night of like time. three o'clock in the morning, three thirty. We tried opening it. Like, say it again, Rosemary. Say it again. Okay, Evan, you you try. I can't get it. We couldn't get it open. He had to go get her. At and Rosemary, you got it open after the second try. First try. First try. Uh -huh. You gotta have, you gotta have those light <laughs> fingers. <laughs> are we having an executive session? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Okay. So, can I just, uh, while we're still on, it, does this, do we feel like this solves the problem for I'm asking you two because your office said, do we feel like this solves the problem or is there a need for temporary relocation? I think you're still looking at months away from getting that work done on the first floor. So there are things that could be done fairly easily with not a lot of expense, I think, to improve upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, like the other day, because of the only table that was being used for meetings was between Rosemary, me, and Eric, and people were having a meeting there, a table full of them. It was pretty difficult. <laughs> for us to continue to work. So <clears throat> when they got done, Eric said, we're moving the table when we we moved it. Um, but if we got more of those- Who was in there, if you guys weren't the ones in there? It was uh, all the floodplain. Mm -hmm. uh, well, having so, some filing cabinets would probably help, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some dividers, and I'm thinking maybe some shelves to put some of the stuff on that's just sitting on tables now. Mm -hmm and either those tables are used better or, or folded up and put away <clears throat> uh, instead of just having everything all spread out. That's why I was asking before about how much space you need because I could almost see that there's enough room up there for some of these boards and commissions that don't have a lot of public coming in to have their meetings there. Yeah. 
So far. Right, but if it's reorganized in a more usable way, will there still be that space? So. Oh, yeah, yes, that's, yeah, I think so. So back to the initial <coughs> question, I guess, uh, or one of do you, would you like to get an office flow or is there a person in Rosemary or do you just want us to approve up to X dollars for dividers and filing cabinets or do you want to come back yeah, with a request? Because we're going to have another person. Right. Even if we go downstairs, where's that person going to go? Yeah. Where we're going to get bunk bed desks. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary, do you want somebody to come in and help? <clears throat> so I think that's a good idea. I do too. I, I don't think motion to have Rosemary have somebody come in and assist with the organizer. Just do I it. Know. I think you can just do it. Is it some kind of designer or space expert? Yeah. Beth is super organized and knows. <laughs> Nice. Touche. Uh, I'm not asking, uh -huh. but there are space organizers that can help find people to find it. Mm. And then if she has like recommendations or like you and Carl talk to uh, he, her, <clears throat> them, they, if they have recommendations, just come back and ask for the dividers and whatever you need for filing cabinets. I get that it's, it's needed so you guys can do your job better and more close to what you used to be able to do it, so. <coughs> okay, awesome. Um, executive session. I motion to enter into executive session as allowed by 1 VSA 313A3. For Second. employee evaluation, inviting Carl and Rosemary. I think we're going to have one more executive session, right? Huh? That we'll have one more after employee evaluation. Probably. I don't know. Would there be action coming out? <coughs> Potentially. <coughs> Probably not. I don't know. Potentially. All right. Uh, we'll have action. All right. Potentially. Um, okay. <coughs> so, this is going to be a five minute break because we need to. Do. Does somebody want to second this? Second. Oh, oh, oh. Second.